We got uh, Bill Burr standing by. He's uh, joining the program. Tonight. All right. He's doing Letterman Bill's tonight? Doing Letterman tonight. That's very, very nice. I like Bill. I want to hear his take. Coming in from Hollywood to, to do Letterman. I'm sure there's some conspiracy involved with the uh, election. Dude, dude, Bill likes to sit back. Dude, and then he has always these weird theories, but yeah. they somehow make some kind of sense. Of course they do. He talks me into a lot of these conspiracy things where after he leaves, I'm like, geez, I think Bill had a point I there. I got to look into this a little bit further. <laughs> There's gas in our urine. He's absolutely right. We can fuel our cars with it. <laughs> yeah, let's. Uh, and, and he's a Pats fan, uh, so we'll get his take on the Super Bowl a little bit. Well, maybe not. We'll see where how he's doing with that yeah. whole thing. We're going to slice his Achilles before he walks in. <laughs> yeah, I know. Let I know. him hobble in. I know. You're checking out the Opie and Anthony Show. Bill Burr joining the program. It's going to be on Letterman tonight. Let's not forget about that. Ooh. Uh, Actually, it's, it's going to be on Friday. Oh, your tape yes. today? Yeah, oh, they do that two. tape thing. So I'm, yeah, I'm on the late one. Oh, I'm glad you jumped right in there then, Bill. Mm. Okay, so Friday we'll see you on Letterman. Absolutely. Great tapes today. Great. Uh, Roy Scheider. Dead. Dead. 75. I guess God needed a shark hunter. What did God need in this case? Uh, they, not him. He's just an old guy with a few diseases, so he's dead. Jimmy very pissed off, and I don't blame him. Got to bring it to the show, Jimmy. This behind-the-scenes stuff is driving us nuts. I just we have a, I didn't realize this, but on uh, the guys are actually looking for it now. But uh, Keith Oldman, who I, I I just can't tell you how much I hate this smug bore. Yes. Uh, who, who crucified his own coworker for saying that Chelsea was pimped out. Apparently on page seven of the post. Jimmy, can I slow you down a little bit? Because people are just waking up. Okay. I want to replay that. Um, yeah, who was it? David Schuster? Yes. On MSNBC uh, said that Chelsea Clinton is being pimped out, yes, for the Hillary campaign. And uh, he had to apologize, and that wasn't good enough. For some reason, Keith Oberman is now apologizing for his co-worker in such a smug way. This is how it went down. Now you have probably heard that on this network yesterday, my colleague David Schuster discussing Chelsea Clinton's role, a first for her in her mother's campaign, asked a guest, quote, doesn't it seem like Chelsea's sort of being pimped out in some weird sort of way? Uh, the greatest possible respect for David Schuster's work, his reporting for this show and others, is assiduous and excellent, and his political insight is keen. All that being noted, it was still an utterly inappropriate and indefensible thing to say. The Clintons have every right to be furious, hurt, and appalled. Many of us here have similar reactions, ones that transcend political parties and politics itself. David has been suspended. It remains only for me to apologize without limit to President Clinton, to Senator Clinton, and to Ms. Clinton on behalf of MSNBC. We are literally dreadfully sorry. <laughs> and this is the reason why we hate, or most of us in the studio, mm. hate Keith Oberman. Go, Jim. Trying so hard to be eloquent. Using big so words. Hard. Oh, I get it. You're smarter than me. Trying so Blech. hard to be the eloquent spokesman who sets yeah. it right. And uh, this is why I just, I just, I, I hate his parted hair, first of all. He looks like John Edwards, but slightly more irritated. <laughs> um, because he apparently said the same thing uh, about a, a, a general. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and this is what he said. There's a date here and everything, September 20, 2007. Apparently he said, in pimping General David Patriots or whatever, in a violation of everything in this country, blah, blah, blah. So he used the expression... So he understands that it's like a pop culture right. way of speaking. It's not literally you mean pimping her out, putting makeup on her, sh send her out the door to have sex for money, and then bring it back to the Clintons. So he knows it's almost right. like pimp that out. The, yeah, the pimp Giants it out. Gonna kill the Patriots. Like now, that, that's I'm not saying that to rub your face in the bill, but I'm only saying that like <laughs> nobody thinks the Giants are gonna murder the Patriots. It's just kind of like right. a pop, pop culture, culture way we speak. Sure. Yes. It's, it's our it's our language, our common language understanding. So when you say pimp out. It just means using somebody uh, for your own gains. Yeah. Uh, and that's pretty much what he was insinuating that the Clintons are doing with Chelsea. So I was wondering, we should have kind of, I wish, hopefully we would, would have had that because it's... Well, it was buried in the paper today, Jimmy. Why would we have that? It's and that, that would and be a, a tough find. Even though she was uh, brought up in, in front of us in the White House as a little kid, she's not a little girl anymore. Right. She can handle it. She can handle it. Yeah, it's not like you're saying this about. Uh, She's old enough to be pimped. To be pimped out. <laughs> <laughs> and hot enough. It, it's. <laughs> I give, give her 150, 200. <laughs> she gets points. She gets points just for being the Clinton's daughter. Yeah. Like like that right there. Even if you don't find her attractive, the thought of having any kind of uh, contact like that with her would be a little more titillating because. 
of the power base of her parents. And, and again, this is uh, not to... Because I actually do like her. I like the fact that she stayed... But why is she untouchable? She's now... Off limits. Yeah, like yeah. she's now speaking up in the campaign, and she is an adult, and it's like, look... Now she she's fair perks. game. Yeah, she gets if, she, if she is, is uh, stumping for her mom... She is then fair game for any criticism. And if somebody wants to say she's being pimped out by her mother and father to go out there and, and phone, do phoners to these super delegates to try to get them on board, uh, then you, you can absolutely say that the Clintons are, figuratively speaking, pimping her out. But again, that's not pointed out, and this, this smarmy smarmy hypocrite the guy is he just, mm -hmm. uh, oh, i have to go worst. look up assiduous i don't do it assiduous I, I, I really want to use that today oh, assiduous he, he just want to show that he's smarter than you With yeah. he's so smug every night on that dumb all show i know is whenever you say assiduous. the word you have to pronounce every letter assiduous, assiduous. i thought it was residuous <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I said that so clearly i could spell it from the way yeah. he did it. <laughs> uh clint day from dallas writes dreadfully sorry should be reserved for squashing infants with tires <laughs> <laughs> yeah he, he apologized like something really horrible was done and it's like eh, come on uh she do? what I, mean, did yeah, do? I remember a few years ago somebody said uh they were talking about a game coming up and the, one of the athletes said yeah this is going to be a war and then he had to apologize because we were at war. Don't you think it, during a time like this, it's like, oh, shut up. We spend more time in this country apologizing for, for crap. crap that, first of all, you don't need to apologize for. And secondly, the people that are apologizing really don't mean it. No one really gets on and does a public apology and means it. I'm sorry. It just doesn't happen. I've apologized numerous times. I've never meant it. I've never meant it in public, you know. <laughs> When people say, do you apologize for this, that, or the other thing? I'm just going to be honest. No. I thought I was right every single goddamn time, and I was forced <laughs> to make an apology. I don't I don't apologize. Yeah, we do our thing and, you know, hope for the best. You know. Whatever. At home, it's different. You apologize. And yeah. Even if you don't mean it, you got to say you did. <laughs> <laughs> dreadfully sorry. I'm dreadfully, Dread literally dreadfully sorry. Uh, whatever. Whatever. What else is going on in the world today? We, we got this how to look your best naked crap from, mm -hmm. a, from a gay guy, by the way. Oh, oh, by the way, if we ever do have to apologize in the future, I just want to tell the listeners, I don't mean it. All right, if we ever have to, oh, and, and it looks like I'm being sincere of and really apologetic, I'm not, and I never mean it. Like they really believed this last time. Oh, Who are please. You kidding? Stop. Assiduous, Worst acting way. ever. Sharp. <laughs> caustic. His assiduous criticism of the book. Oh. Was keen. Thank you, Sam. Is keen, that the audio? Keen. Oh, he, oh, wait. Whoa, whoa, wait. Really? <laughs> this is a good find. Okay, Ooh. so let's play the Oberman thing again. Oh, God, do we hate this guy. This is Oberman apologizing about his colleague. And now you have probably heard that on this network yesterday, my colleague David Schuster discussing Chelsea Clinton's role, a first for her in her mother's campaign, asked a guest, quote, doesn't it seem like Chelsea's sort of being pimped out in some weird sort of way? Now, the greatest possible respect for David Schuster's work, his reporting for this but, show and others, is assiduous but, and excellent, and his political insight is keen. All that being noted, it's still an utterly inappropriate and indefensible thing to say. The Clintons have every right to be furious, hurt, and appalled. Many of us here have similar reactions, ones that transcend political parties <laughs> you and don't. politics itself. Liar. David has been suspended. It remains only for me to apologize without limit to President Clinton, to Senator Clinton, and to Ms. Clinton on behalf of MSNBC. We are literally dreadfully sorry. And remember, Chelsea's an adult. Yeah. Because he's about to use the the, the same term. Word pimping. Yeah. It's amazing. She is an adult, and, and everyone knew the context in which it was used. God almighty, why, why are you so grovelly? My favorite part of that is how he apologizes without limit, which means if, if uh, Hillary said, come over and be my maid for a month, he would say yes. He would have to. Because there's no limit to yeah. his apology. Because right. he's uh, that dreadfully sorry. Dreadfully. Right. Well, this is Keith <laughs> Oberman. <laughs> Phony! This is Keith Oberman going back in time just a year or two. Ooh. What year was it again? Our DeLorean. Oh, no. of 07. Oh, just a few months ago. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay, this is Oberman who just had the, who did that apology for his uh, mm -hmm. colleague there. 
But Mr. Bush, you have hidden behind the general's skirts. And today you've hidden behind the skirts of the planted last question at a news conference to indicate once again that your presidency has been about the tilted playing field, about no rules for your party in terms of character assassination and changing the fabric of our nation, and no right for your opponents or critics to as much as respond. That, sir, is not only un-American, it is dictatorial. And in pimping General David Petraeus, sir, in violation of everything this country has been assiduously and vigilantly against for two years. He loves it. He loves it. To blur the gleaming radioactive demarcation <laughs> between the military <laughs> and the political. Looks like someone got one of those calendars. <laughs> <laughs> word of the day. Big word assiduous. of the day. Today's big word of the day. It's assiduous. <laughs> what a dope. What a funny. Wow, pimping. And he said it like oh, yeah. pimping. Yeah. Oh, that is a great word. That just makes you bristle. Yeah. So he uses that word. But, he uh, uses it all the time. Assiduously. Assiduous. Honey, this steak is assiduous. <laughs> just uses it wrong. <laughs> yeah. Right. Does it just, as long as he's using it. <laughs> right. Don't oh. stop. I'm getting close. But it tastes uh, assiduous. <laughs> assiduous. <laughs> And uh, you're right, though. Fox is the only network that's biased politically. Not MSNBC. No, NBC. no. Only Fox. No, I think they're, re they're really balanced. Yeah. yeah. Find, uh, there you go. There's, <laughs> there's, there's the hypocrite right there. He used the same <laughs> example. He used, it, he used it worse, in a worse way. No, I don't think he meant that uh, President Bush <laughs> was uh, putting this guy out on the street, having him have sex, and then collecting the money. I don't think that's what he meant. Even though he is a douche, I don't think that's what he meant. Wait a minute. I get it. Mm. What? In criticizing Bush, mm -hmm. he was criticizing a uh, conservative. But when you're criticizing Chelsea Clinton, you're criti- Aha. Uh -huh. Oh, see right. The the see, it's a different party. The Democrat. Okay, now I get it. Okay. Man, that makes sense. Both adults. General's an adult. Chelsea's yeah. an adult. Both uh, making their own free choice. The general joined the military. Chelsea is speaking freely. Mm -hmm. No one adult. touched Chelsea for years. And when her mother was campaigning for a senator, uh, she didn't get up and give speeches. She didn't talk because pretty much her mother had it in the bag. You knew she was going to win. Now, this one's getting real close. So she's dragging out every possible thing she can. One of which is uh, the daughter that is well liked in this country. Mm -hmm. So if she gets up there and, and speaks on her behalf, why can't somebody criticize that by saying that she is figuratively speaking, of course, being pimped out by her parents? What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? It was a direct. It's literally he said Bush was pimping this guy, and yeah. aren't the Clintons pimping her? It was a direct parody. Yeah. Of course, um, a parallel, mm -hmm. and one is one is okay, and one's not, and one, and one gets you suspended, right. one is and, and and puts out an apology that should be reserved for uh, accidentally killing a family. <laughs> it's just it is no place for that uh, apology. Let's let's go to John in New York. John, hey uh, John, I wonder if there's a beep, beep. world record for the most syllables in a sentence. <laughs> there's a lot of big words in that sentence. He used big words. He sure big did. Words. All right, thanks. Uh, cigars and scotch, what's up? His monotonous use of the word assiduous is dreadful, and I suggest you break out the thesaurus and start apologizing on his behalf. <laughs> With a thesaurus? <laughs> Big thesaurus <laughs> apology. <laughs> Maybe it was a writer's strike. So he had just <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we'll turn this into an apology. Assiduous. He loves that word, though. <laughs> oh. oh, boy, hold on a minute. We got a, a supporter, I think. Dennis in New York, yes. Yes, good morning, fellows. Yes. Uh, I would like to say this unabashed reviling of Keith Oberman is both capricious and arbitrary. <laughs> <laughs> we have a smart listener. Wow. <laughs> Thank you, man. I'm glad you agree. <laughs> I'd like to linger momentarily. Me. Oh, that is very funny. Thank you, sir. Francus, fellows. Yes. Francus, indeed, Francus. Let's go to Joe in Denver. Joe? Hey, good morning, but... What the hell does assiduous mean? Assiduous. <laughs> it means sharp and caustic. And here's an example. His assiduous criticism of the book. Of, yes. Of the book. <laughs> he criticized assiduous. it in a sharp and caustic fashion. Sharp and caustic. That book sucked. <laughs> <laughs> that is assiduous. What did you think of that book? It was shite. <laughs> um... Jimmy? Yes. Do you think um, 
Keith Olbermann likes using the word assiduous. I don't think he likes that word. Mm. Huh? I, think I think he loves a- it. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, the catchphrase. That's oh, right. we, there was a bullet wound, and there was a sinuous around it, Sam. <laughs> How could there be a sinuous around it? Sharp and caustic? <laughs> yes. That's right. <laughs> I think the knife was assiduous. <laughs> it was cut with an assiduous blade. Oh, what did that result in? Murder. <laughs> he, he almost forgot. He almost forgot his catchphrase. I know, that's his big Jim C. catchphrase. He almost forgot your catchphrase. <laughs> Jim, it's one of my favorite impressions he does. I do. I know, Quincy, I know three lines from it. <laughs> he only does three lines, but they're fantastic. Let's say and he was dreadfully sorry. He was assiduous. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to Anthony in New York. Uh, Anthony, <laughs> great Klugman, you bastard. Yeah. Good morning, guys. Hey. <laughs> I was just wondering, I haven't heard from uh, Tyson in a while. I wonder if he knows how to spell assiduous. Assiduous? Y Q R P L pound sign and an exclamation point. Assiduous. Assiduous. I got into her assiduous <laughs> and she charged me with rape. <laughs> Wow, there's a linger longer. You think the pimping Ooh. reference was uh, incorrect, Mike? No, that was legitimate. Legit. L B Q R A. Legitimate. I have been get. A lot of people are being assiduous with me. What does that mean? That means I I get charged with rape again. Oh, I should use the bullhorn. The Queen of England is an assiduous whore. <laughs> well, let's go to Jared in Boston. Uh, Jared. <laughs> Holy crap, Ant. Thank you. Uh, I thought assiduous was a kind of tree. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> well, whatever. The password is <laughs> right. assiduous. What? Um, I'll take assiduous for a thousand, Alex. <laughs> what my stroke was. <laughs> assiduous. <laughs> no, that would be under hilarious for a thousand. <laughs> we change gears with this. Turn the handles, hear them click. You'll never know when you'll be hit. It's pie face. Ask your mom for some cream. Pilot high is the scream. Now you spin, watch the snore. Never had such fun before. It's pie face. Something else you can do. Play the game without the goo. It's pie face. Pie face, the goofiest, funniest suspense game. Just reset the mystery handle, load the sponge with water, or ask mom or dad to put on topping or foam. The spinner tells you the turns to take, but watch out, it's pie face. It's a game and it's new. Get your face full of goo. It's pie face. <laughs> with spinner, mask, and pie thrower. Fun for you and grown-ups too. Pie face from Hasbro. <laughs> Is that real? Oh, Is that a game? Uh, sure I don't was. even remember that one, and I remember everything. 1968. With those... oh, that, that kind oh. of flopped. Okay. Yeah. I guess they thought, wow, it's funny. Kids just love watching those pie-throwing you know, things. Look, look at the video. We'll put it up on ONA Radio. Oh, is that it? <laughs> <laughs> you, oh, you put your face in, like, a little like hole in a piece of cardboard. Yeah. And then you crank what amounts to a, um, <laughs> a hand holding a pie. Self-inflicted pie face. And it slams it into your face. Yeah, that's wonderful. That's nice. Oh, you spin something, and then... What? I think it tells you how many times you have to turn your thing. Yeah. Oh, so oh. If you, the more you got to turn it, the more chances you're going to get pie face. You're going to get goo in your face. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's right. That's Isn't what parents good? want, huh? Yeah, way to teach uh, kids how to get goo in their face. What a mess that would make. Do it with a nice hot shepherd's pie or a pot pie. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Scald it. <laughs> pot pie face. Scald your child in the face. <laughs> <laughs> Remove those zits. I can't think of a rhyme. <laughs> <laughs> it's Pie Face on YouTube, and we'll link it later. Hey, uh, Frank in Brooklyn, what's up? Hey, it's Fred from Brooklyn. Oh, Fred, oh, what's Fred, up? Whatever. Of course it is. We I care know. about we your know name. That. How you doing? Good. Uh, you, you guys are ragging on Keith Olbermann unnecessarily. I I personally think he's supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. <laughs> wow. Big words. Yes, you got to use that. 
Okay. Yeah, if you're calling the show today, you got to use big words, please. Uh, we want to up the, our game a little bit. Keith is super califragilistic, expialidocious. Ducious. Yes. Yeah. Clutch, Baltimore. <laughs> Yeah. Boo. Oh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know my scalp is tingling? <laughs> I kind of oh, liked it, Jimmy. My scalp is... Oh. How, how far into the word did you get that you realized the end was just not going to really... Super. <laughs> <laughs> what killed him? It was a bomb. A bomb went off, and it blew his mouth out. <laughs> Get my members only jacket and my flat ass girlfriend. <laughs> you don't have to put the music on every goddamn God, time. Miley, get it. Do, 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 do. Let's go to Baltimore. Clutch, what's up? Hey, I just want to make mention that he was actually pimped out by his network for using that uh, apology. Yeah, yeah, that apology was. Yeah, he was pimped out by MSNBC. See you, boys. Very good. Good. How good, ironic. Uh, good observation. All right. What irony. We got Bill Burr in studio. Uh -huh. He's uh, he's going to be on Letterman on Friday tonight. No, he's taping. Taped tonight, oh, and they okay. show it on Friday. Were you mm -hmm. out of? Oh, you were out of the studio. I was out of the studio. I didn't realize. Oh, okay. That. Yeah, we. Uh, and also, I want to know what Bill's working on, like in his head. What do? Want to know what you're working on as far as conspiracies? After uh, the break. Any kind of problems that you have? The whole election thing. I wanted to be what okay. your take oh, is have, on. Have a nice uh, on that. Kumia argument. Yeah. <laughs> After the break, but it's Black History legendary. Month. <laughs> we have today's uh, honoree. Yes. Bill Byrne Studio. It's the Opie and Anthony show. Still lots to do today. We got uh, men hiring proposal planners for Valentine's Day. Huh? Proposal planners now they got? Yeah. Instead of just wedding planners and everything? I yeah, we plan for everything. We could go down that road. And then uh, Anthony brought this to our attention. How to look your best naked. Yeah, it's in the paper uh, today. How to look your best naked. And it's a little list, the uh, top ten, I guess, uh, a list of... What you could do to make yourself look and feel better about your nude body. Sit up. Y yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, that's <laughs> what they well. should do. That exactly. Exercise. Exactly. Genetics. Genetics. <laughs> but no, uh, this is a just a, a fluff piece written by what's his name, Queer Eye Guy Carson. Well, this is the problem. Uh, everyone has insecurities. Let me read the first paragraph about how they look in the buff. Thankfully, we now have Queer Eye for the Straight Guys, Carson Cressley, to make us feel good about our bodies. Mm -hmm. Here's the problem. He's making women feel good about their naked bodies. Have you seen the show? He doesn't know. I, I refuse to. Oh, it's brutal. Maybe we should yeah. get audio from it. He oh, doesn't he'll, know. He'll, he'll have like some really hefty girl. Thank and you. he'll put her in bigger panties than she was wearing and then say you look great. And then he just picks up this fat mess and sort of bounces her around like she's a big baby. <laughs> <laughs> and she's going, hi, guys. Great, and it's one of the most <laughs> horrific things you've ever seen. Can we get I was watching with my girl, and she was punching me in the shoulder so hard because I was dying laughing. I'm going, she's, she's, she just, he just put bigger underwear on her. <laughs> Can we get this audio? Oh, that's great. Bill, you want to put a, put a lace parachute around her, <laughs> and then all of a sudden I'm supposed to be, oh my god, where you been all my life? <laughs> Bill, you want to produce this radio uh, show? We pay well. Oh, all right. Until the rider striker's over, the rider strike is over because we need a producer, man. Why don't we have the audio of... Dude, that's like my awful, pasty white legs that everyone makes fun of from May to September of every year. And all of a sudden, you give me a little bit longer Jordan shorts, but you still see my awful, pasty right, calves. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. I feel so much Ooh. more tanner. Uh, well, here we go. So, Cressley's new Lifetime show, How to Look Good Naked, takes the average women and shows them just how to make the most of what they've got. And to be honest, it's hard to not... Feel great about yourself with Carson gushing all over you. It's a gay guy, though. What does he know about yeah. the naked freaking gushing all body? over you? It's a little scary. <laughs> right. I don't like that part. But what if you can't get him into your home? Cressley has come up with 10 tips for daily news readers on how to fall at, uh, head over heels in love with your body just in time for Valentine's Day. Yeah. Way number one, stand in front of Bob Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, all ridiculous stuff because um, it it is about hefty women. The woman in the Daily News, picture of her, she's a, a big fat broad. And uh, do little things that make you feel pretty is what uh, he says. Looking cute is feeling cute. That's all there is to it. No, it's not. And they don't have to be big things. Uh, it could be a day at the spa. It doesn't it have something to be, yeah. 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 It, it doesn't box. have to be a day at the spa. It could be something as quick and easy as pedicure or manicure. 
Those little indulgences that tell your brain that you're worth it. To be a little box of Dunkin' Munchkins. Right, or a big box, or 20 of them. <laughs> but, but the whole thing, is, it says it doesn't matter what you can't see, uh, uh, that you can't see a physical change, you'll feel it yourself. Like, no, y- you're still fat, you're still found unattractive by the majority of people out there. Uh, you're a burden on a plane. Uh, there's plenty of other things. <laughs> you spill I over into the of. next scene. <laughs> yeah. It's, um, uh, so doing little things to make yourself feel pretty ain't going to do it. Look in the mirror is number two. No, really take a look. <laughs> Be honest with yourself. <laughs> That's what they say. Uh, on the show, the lady standing uh, front and center in the nude in front of a three-way mirror under fluorescent lights. But you can do something uh, similar at home. But post, uh, put post-it notes on your bathroom mirror. Take a good hard look at yourself. Write down one or two things about your body that are great. Next time you look in the mirror, you won't focus on your jiggly upper arms, but on your great boobs. And you'll think to yourself, wow, I look great. You know what this sounds like? This sounds like they're fixing up like a dilapidated house. <laughs> and they're just sort of painting like the porch. Yeah, yeah. Paint the porch and uh, that it's way. High. It's got hardwood floors. Yeah. It's a great area. If you paint the front door a bright color, you'll feel better about walking in to the disaster <laughs> that is in fr- behind the door. Wait, look in the mirror, and behind yourself, green screen, African plains, <laughs> and a little bird on your back, and a herd of rhinoceros. <laughs> a bird on your back. <laughs> you'll feel pretty and slender. <laughs> and little post-its all over the mirror. You see number three? <laughs> uh, Get comfortable in your body. Vacuum, yeah. vacuum your living room in the nude. It just mm. makes it more normal and makes you more comfortable with your body. But please close the blinds. Yes. Well, that's what they say. They go, just make sure you have some good quality blinds on the window. <laughs> or not. <laughs> oh, oh, I get well, it. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so people could go, oh, my God, there's a fat broad vacuuming. And she's naked. Do your housework in the nude, especially scrubbing the toilet. And then jam your finger down your fat throat and lose a few of those tons, you silly goose. <laughs> Just look out who's behind you when you vacuum <laughs> under the couch. John in New York has a great one. John, go ahead. Some people that have watched this show. Yes, John. At one section of the show, they put these big broads in these like <laughs> thin tight outfits, and they look like one of them old salamis that are hanging from the ceiling in the meat <laughs> bus. Uh. You ever see them? <laughs> they, they make them look like salamis? <laughs> yeah, they got all stuffed in. Maybe a bologna. I don't know. Maybe not a salami. But. I'm with you. I like the visual. Thank it you, messes. sir. Here's a one that really gets me because this is the give up factor. Yeah. Uh, clean out your closet. Mm-hmm. Don't worry about fitting into your skinny jeans. Invest in some clothes that make you look and feel really sexy. Get something in a great color. A pretty cashmere sweater in a sweet, pretty color can do wonders. So that's pretty much a take poncho. your skinny pants. Yeah, poncho or tent. <laughs> <laughs> Take your skinny pants and throw them away. Give up on the idea of ever fitting in them again. That's the give up factor. No. Take your skinny pants, look at them, and say, I got to get that skinny again. That way you'll look sexy. Don't take it from a homosexual. <laughs> He's really not going to know what guys uh, find attractive on these women. He's parading around fatty. He's thinking if he gussies them up in some colors that uh, regular hetero guys are going to be head over heels. No. Get something in a great color, which would be kind of like brown at the bottom, and then it tapers up into green, and then comes into like white on the top of your hat, like a mountain. This way you'll <laughs> blend in with the scenery. <laughs> Dress right. like a mountain. <laughs> That's right. Oh, yeah. Hang a Sherpa in your closet. <laughs> Let's say hi to Pat and Belmore. Pat, what's up? Uh, I was going to say, gentlemen, that uh, what Caution Cressley doesn't realize is that Window dressing is not going to create a Pygmalion-esque transformation. <laughs> I'm punching out. They told you, you got to use big words today. In honor of Keith Overman, that douche. Uh, re- uh, what other ones are good here? Uh, love yourself. That's yeah. always a good one. Even on Valentine's Day, the first person you need to love and focus on is yourself. Know that you're worth loving. That's right. Mm. Sounds like somebody's alone on Valentine's Day. Exactly. <laughs> 
Even if you're alone staring in that mirror putting post-it notes on about your boobs. You're at home loving yourself while your husband's at work banging the secretary. <laughs> She's just crying on Valentine's Day. Know that you're worth living as you're on your hands and knees nude, eating a Whitman sampler like the pig that you are. <laughs> Not even using your hands. <laughs> just eating the paper that comes with it and everything. Oh, and a little side note, don't forget others love you too. If you have a great photo of yourself from a sexy night out, have a friend write something nice on that photo telling you that you look hot or have amazing legs. Have a fr So you're supposed to take a picture, um, give it to a friend and go, could you write something good on the back of this about me? Hey, this looks like a nice restaurant you're good. in. <laughs> you'd, be, you'd look great laying on a plate with an apple in your <laughs> yeah. mouth. Right. Well, nice pick. I loved you in Charlotte's Web. <laughs> <laughs> Some picture. That's all, folks. <laughs> Keep it in your purse and pull it out as a reminder if you start to feel down on yourself. Oh, God, this what a pathetic friggin' mess that is. <laughs> if you got to go into your purse and, and look at a coerced statement written on the back of a, a photo that of, you took of yourself. Of a picture like where you, you might look like you're three. <laughs> yeah, an old picture. I like number eight. Take care of your skin. Take a great exfoliating bath. I'm just picturing like a yak, you know, they're itchy and they rub up against a tree. <laughs> rub against an exfoliating tree. <laughs> if your skin feels pretty and sexy, so will you. Really? Sexy is as sexy does. That's what mama said. Retard. Do things that make you feel alive. Do activities that make you feel sexy with your clothes on. Like raping a buffet. <laughs> Do that. Taking two giant platefuls of food back to your lonely table. <laughs> Dude, anybody could write this stuff. Feeling beautiful is thinking beautiful. Yeah, just, just look in the mirror and say, I am beautiful, and you will feel more beautiful. <laughs> Can I have my check, please? There, you just did it. Anyone could do this. Tease your hair up. <laughs> Let me bounce you around the room. Yeah, you'll feel better. Uh, I'll, I'll do these the activities, sexy activities uh, with your clothes on, and you'll feel better with them off. Go dancing or go flirting and get your endorphins pumping. And your appetite. Do endorphins come in Entenmann's Donuts? <laughs> right. That's what you want, a big fat girl in the club all pumped up and <laughs> looking, for a, looking for a hug. Trying to flirt. <laughs> Nothing worse. Yeah. Just stop. So where are you from? Ringling Brothers, you're hired. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to Brian. Brian, you're, you're on the OP. I'm a circus show. worker using an exfoliating brush yeah, on you. No, go through four or five loofah sponges <laughs> in your awful body so, so they're smooth like marble. Have a friend hose you down with some perfume. <laughs> <laughs> Try not to trample him. Stand naked in the yard like in Pulp Fiction and just have somebody wash the sweat off your back fat. <laughs> Uh, and wear sexy lingerie all the time. Nice lingerie will make you feel beautiful. A fab bra and underwear are your foundation for the whole day. If you have <laughs> granny panties and a torpedo bra on, you're not going to feel hot no matter uh, what else you're wearing. Have a good friend measure your ass crack. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's say hi to Brian. Brian, what's up? Brian. Hey, guys. Hey. I was wondering if uh, any of these girls are about a size 14. They're about a size 14. Yeah, they're Where'd you? Where'd you? Let's where, go to Brian where, in Dallas. Where, where's the, uh, Sorry, sorry. Brian. Help a gentleman put a couch in the back of his van. <laughs> Brian. Yeah. <laughs> What's up? Hey, I just wanted to say no amount of clothes is going to fix a paucity of pulchritude. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Brian. Wow. He went to the, the alliteration, too. Yeah, I like it. Rub the lotion on your skin. <laughs> Do this whenever you're told. <laughs> and put the lotion in the bucket. <laughs> Wear sexy leopard skin, and if you don't have that, just borrow the curtains of a Puerto Rican. <laughs> uh, these are all just crap. Like Bill said, you can just make them up yourself. Yeah. Feel good about you. That's the most important thing. Look in the mirror and say, I'm worth anybody out there. Really? Part your hair on the other side. <laughs> Give yourself a makeover. Go out and come home as disappointed as you do every day. <laughs> Get some clip-on earrings and hang it on your other chin. <laughs> <laughs> Embrace your double chin. <laughs> Dress it up. That's right. Learn to do John Candy's voice so you can look out and sound like him at parties and make everybody laugh. <laughs> Sean in North Carolina has one. Sean. Uh, 
go to the beach for the day, but put up little notes letting Greenpeace know you're okay. <laughs> <laughs> you're okay. Nathan in Massachusetts, what's up? Hey, yo, I was just wondering, does Jimmy still have around his little box of tender sentiments? That just sounds like what this is, what he needs right now. I forgot about They that. do sound like Jimmy's tender There's sentiments. Tender sentiments for fat uh, broads. For fatties. That's right. Yeah. You're not fat. The planet is just small. <laughs> <laughs> And, and again, the, the gay guy is the worst guy that's going to tell a, a, a fat woman how to be sexy. Because the, the bottom line is lose weight. You're going to get chubby chasers. No doubt there. You'll get some chubby chasers. Yeah. Fat chicks get laid all the time. Mm -hmm. It's chubby chasers, though. You're, you're like, you're a fetish. You're not looked at like a human. <laughs> you're not looked at like a girl that uh, uh, guys are attracted to. You're a fetish, like a foot. Or, or, just... or uh, uh, water sports. <laughs> Somebody. Well, that's like when, when you decide to finally get the membership. is The gym membership is when you become a fetish. Yeah. And you're literally just. Yeah. You're just a fetish. Like a, a, an average guy isn't going to look at you, but uh, there's guys that like feet. There are guys that like uh, water sports, they're called, things like that. And there are guys that like fat broads. You're a fetish. Go men, to the gym. Men will have sex with you if they're afraid of abandonment. And they, <laughs> if mother left when they were young, they'll be happy to hop on you because you'll never leave, will you? Let's go to Corinne. Corinne, what's up? To feel sexy, match your bridle to your feedback. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, you can make up your own at home. Mindy in Arizona, she used to be 350 pounds. What's up, Mindy? This is all crap. None of it works. It only works if you're really fat and don't want to lose any weight. Yeah, it's still... I, used to do, I used to try this stuff all the time, and I thought I looked really great. But I was, I was a cow. Okay, it doesn't work. <laughs> it's it's the lazy way out. It really is. Exactly, exactly. You know, it takes hard work. That it means eating a few salads every once in a while and doing a few crunches, like Bill said to start this bit. You know, exactly. this is the lazy way to come up with little tender sentiment. Yeah, yeah, just make you feel good about it. And and be, there's this whole. thing thing going on with um uh fat people i'm not talking about chunky girls something like that because they you know everybody likes a little bit of something some people like emaciated girls and some people like them a little chunky and everything in between i'm talking about fat girls they, you, you see them out there and uh there's this whole thing now where it's completely acceptable it's accepted you're not to criticize it make fun of it the clothing uh, stores are putting out lines where they can feel like they're being sexy, but they're not. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just like you said, the lazy way out. Just go to the gym. Absolutely. <laughs> eat, but the don't eat. The and and any time you ask them, oh, no, I had a salad and I had this. And I'd love to follow them around with a camera one day. I'd probably eat the camera. Uh, we got wouldn't a get any, we, got someone com we got someone complaining. It's Brett in Canada. Brett. Uh oh Yes, yeah, so I find that the uh, way that you, uh, the reprehensible way that you are speaking of the pituitary Rubenesque women is uh, arduous, <laughs> assiduous, reprehensible, and and so forth. <laughs> <laughs> so forth. Thank you, Brett from Canada. Uh, Aunt loves chicks with breasts bigger than his head, right? No, you do. I'm not into no. What have I ever been into girls with like giant breasts? I don't right, like heard. that look. I just don't like that whole What's look. North Carolina checking in. Sean, what's up? Giant stripper cans. Remember, <laughs> remember convex mirrors and 40-watt light bulbs are your friends. 40-watt <laughs> bulbs. Yeah, funhouse mirrors for everybody. Alaska is your friend for six months out of the year. <laughs> All right, we got to get audio from this show. This sounds like oh, yeah. a hoot. Listen to the homosexual try to tell the girls how to dress. Hey, uh, um, be sexy. Tim down the hall decided to play the bleep game with uh, the audio. First, get a schlong. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the MSNBC audio of Chelsea being pimped out. Yeah. Tim took that audio and did this. Oh. Added a few bleeps. And, um, Bill, there's just something a little bit unseemly to me that Chelsea's out there calling up celebrities saying, support my mom. And apparently, she's also calling these super delegates. Hey, she's, she's working for. Not the right track, unfortunately. Oh no! Uh, oh, obviously my fault. Here's a uh, Schuster with a few bleeps. And um, Bill, there's just something a little bit unseemly to me that Chelsea's out there, <laughs> celebrity, saying <laughs> my mom, and apparently she's also <laughs> these super delegates. <laughs> hey, she's she's 
for her mom. What's unseemly about that? I mean, during the last campaign, the Bush twins were out for their dad. I think it's great. I think she's grown up in a political family. She's got politics in her blood. She loves her mom. She thinks she'd make a great president. But doesn't Michelle it seem Obama's like she's out being... there for her husband. So, But doesn't it seem like Chelsea's sort of being pimped out in some weird sort of way? <laughs> no. She's there. Listen, if she didn't want to she wouldn't. I mean, give Chelsea a break. I think it's great. Again, Michelle Obama's out there for her husband. What's, what's the big deal? Oh, good beeps. Uh, good beep segment. Tim from down the hall. Who's actually working on the show as the show goes on. Live. Good man. Good man. Uh, how to look good. Naked clip. Is it good? All right, well, uh, we got some audio from this show we were just discussing. Oh, good. We'll good. do that after the break. Let's not forget Bill Burr on Letterman this Friday night. It's Opie and Anthony. Man, a lot going on today. Hey, uh, you know that commercial we just played about a half hour ago for Pie Face? Yeah. You want to tell the people just in case they're just tuning in, Ant? Yeah, it was a game uh, back in uh, 1968, I think it was put out, called Pie Face. And yeah, little kids would uh, put a pie um, or some whipped cream or whatever on this little hand that was uh, pressed down. I guess it was spring activated. And they put their face in a little cardboard thing uh, with a circle cut out for their face and crank this handle and... Um, Break after, their nose. Uh, yeah, and after a while, <laughs> the hand would, would uh, unlatch and spring up with the pie and smash them in the face with it. And uh, we'll have the TV commercial from 1968 up on onaradio.com later today. Well, uh, Sam took it and, and did the, the beep game with the, uh, the original audio that we just played. Yeah. So keep uh, what Anthony said in mind here. It sounds a little different, by the way, with, yeah. the, with the beeps. I'm sure. Face. Face, the goofiest, funniest game. It's a game and it's new. Get your face full of goo. It's face. Something else you can do. The without the goo. It's face. Fun for you and grown-ups, too. Face from the <laughs> <laughs> that that's different. Uh, wow, that was a suggestion uh, by one of the listeners. Thank you so much. That was very- yeah, that makes it sound a little different. Yeah, so easy sometimes this radio. That's all you have to do to get a laugh. <laughs> all right, uh, we got audio of that show we were just discussion uh, discussing with uh, that discussing discussing with uh, Carson. Yes. Mm. What is the name of the show, Bill? You the one you would laugh at. Uh, with your girl, oh, oh, the gay guy oh. and fat chicks. Yeah, I don't know what Something it's called. Like that. Anyone know what it's called? Let's ride this into the ground. <laughs> <laughs> and he means the fat girl. <laughs> like she's a steer. What's it called, Danny? Bulldog. It's, it's, it's how to look good naked. That's the name of the show. Uh, okay. How to look good naked, okay. and it's a gay right. guy showing you how to look good naked. Ladies. Good luck to That's you. Right. How does a, that make sense? Put a metal stall in front of you, and then cut a hole, a glory hole, in it, and you look terrific naked. <laughs> Uh. Too negative. All right, here we go. Yeah. Audio. Let's take off your top. Just to let you know, 85% of all women are wearing the wrong size bra. 85% yeah. of women wear the wrong size bra. You and took your top off like a stripper named Amber. I mean, like it was like in a second. <laughs> so it's not deep enough in the cup it, because the gay. underwire needs to lay against the rib cage in order to give it to structure do its job. to lift. Just to let you know, only 10% of the support should come from the strap. 90% of the support of a bra should come from the band. Oh and when the band is... <laughs> no, it was just... It was such devastating information. All right, let's try let's some try bras bra. on. So this gives her that nice, dramatic plunging effect. Just going back to this, when you were seeing, you know, those rolls here that you were so concerned about, when you have the right bra, you don't have those rolls. No, you do. Body, wrong bra. You cannot tell me that this doesn't make you feel hot. I See, he doesn't understand that we have to deal with this crap. <laughs> like he's, he's never going to go there. So to him, it's like, oh, you're fixed. Look, you look great. He doesn't have to take that bra off and see that mess. <laughs> if you're wearing a bra that gives you those rolls, they're called uh, back breasts. You ever see those? They pop up and they look like they're breasts yeah. on the back. Well, he's talking about the front, too. It's like <clears throat> it's called ripple boobs. <laughs> what? Really? It kind of ripples out. Your <laughs> <butt>. <laughs> Ugh. It doesn't matter what you're wearing. Your you're still going like to get the, those. The bottom part of a jack in the box. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Accordion stomach. Accordion. <laughs> uh, lasagna belly. 
Oh, there you go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I really don't think I don't think a bra is going to help that. No. Strong bra. You cannot tell me that this doesn't make you feel hot. I love this outfit on me. <laughs> okay. You still can't verbalize it. Okay. okay. Let's get you out in this. It's fun running around in our underwear all day, isn't it? Turn all the way around here. It's very flattering on the butt. cheeky on the butt. I feel really sexy. You feel sexy? Yes. You feel sexy? I know. Oh, my God. <laughs> She's come to. You see how they, like, coax the person into saying it? Like, yeah, just like, say you, it. You cannot tell me that you don't look sexy, because if you I, do, then this show is pointless. I <laughs> you feel sexy? I... <sighs> you you feel sexy! You feel se you're hot, right? Say it! You're hot! <laughs> <laughs> you're not fat anymore, right? Right? <laughs> <laughs> this show works! <laughs> She's a mess. <laughs> And you're lying to her. You're building her up to get. She's gonna get trashed. Yeah. She's gonna. You know what? Now she's gonna walk into a club, and rather than have that, yeah, I know I'm fat, but you know, kind of vibe. She's gonna come in there with like an attitude. Yeah. Which, like she's an eight or a nine. And she's gonna leave yeah. gravely disappointed. Dreadfully. This is sexy. It's all in the right bra. Assiduous. You put it over your mouth, like a surgical mask. You won't be able to eat. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, no. Uh, what else is going on today? Well, fill your bra full of food. <laughs> <laughs> we did the Clemens wife thing. We did uh, Roy. Uh, we lost Roy. Roy Scheider. Scheider from Jaws, seventy-five. Jaws. He's dead. Hey, what age do you not feel bad? Say Heath Ledger died at twenty-eight. You feel bad. Seventy-five. There's, it's not tragic. Nah. Uh, Roy Scheider, seventy-five. Don't feel that's bad. That's still tragic. Seventy-five is young these days. Nah. It really, it really is. No, no, but you don't feel bad. Oh, I don't care about any of them. It's young. <laughs> I don't feel bad about Heath Ledger either. Who cares? I just got creeped out by it. You were creeped out by it? Yeah, just like the whole thing. If somebody could fast forward your life, because you know, if you die, okay, like within a week, you're in the ground. Yeah. So if you could, went to like a fortune teller, where am I going to be in a week? And they just like, <laughs> oh you're, god, just, just in the ground. I mean, that's, you're morbid, man. Yeah, that's what I'm just thinking. It's creepy. Death is. Um, that is creepy. Heath Ledger. It took two and a half weeks to get him in the ground. That body was just rolling around a pine coffin for two and a half weeks. Ugh. They finally buried him. Well, they had to, you know, go through all the tests and stuff, and they fly it. him back to. Well, they, no, they had to take him to L.A. first, yeah. and then they went then to Perth or Australia. Uh, what else? Uh, we did the Chelsea thing. Pat O'Brien back in rehab. Yeah, what's this for? Is it um, drugs or is it that sex problem he's got? Oh no, no, it's it's. I think he's admitting to alcohol. Oh. I thought he was making more of those phone calls, those fun phone calls. He's uh, me, you, Betsy, a prostitute, cocaine. Let's go. Me, you, Chelsea Clinton. Chelsea Clinton. I hear the Clintons are pimping her out. No, it was figurative. I don't care. Someone named Chelsea. Me, you, David Schuster, Keith Olbermann. <laughs> Undisclosed Keith reasons. Oberman. Undisclosed reasons. O'Brien and his doctors felt this is the best course for maintaining his sobriety. Wait a minute. Uh, let me straighten everybody out here. You don't maintain sobriety by going to rehab. You have to go and get your sobriety back. See, no one I'm says, not... wow, I'm still sober. Time for rehab again. <laughs> so I can maintain it. It does. You, you maintain your sobriety through doing certain footwork and following suggested steps and calling certain people. That's how you maintain it. You uh, begin the process by going to rehab. So apparently, old Pat has tumbled face first. <laughs> That's what I'm guessing. Also, uh, the hockey thing. We haven't even talked about the hockey thing. No, that is the, uh, the skate to the throat. Have you seen it yet, Bill? Oh, I saw the. Uh, you saw? Th yeah, saw it at a bar last night. <laughs> they they were playing it on the news this morning, uh, a lot of times, and from every angle and slow motion, and all you see is a skate come up, hit a player on the neck. He grabs at his throat as he falls down, and blood gushes Instantly. in a line, yeah. a continuous puddle line on the ice as he's falling down. Wow. It's just pumping out of his neck. And uh, they showed that over and oh, over again. My. You know, he fell down, but the blood hit the ice before he did. Yeah, yeah it did. That's how fast that came out. Because it was pumping out of his neck. It was you know how his heart must have been beating like crazy anyway. He's playing hockey, for God's sake. Yeah, it's on YouTube. It, this thing is going to be viewed like... Crazy. Oh my God! Yeah, you see that? It's like Tarantino film. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, Richard Zednick. So what happened? He must have hit his jugular. Look at this. Oh, yeah, it looks like it right on the side, right, right. Th this thing right here. Oh. Boom. Oh, God, man. He yeah, he's in bad shape. And then he uh, skates off the ice really fast. That blood neck. comes out. It's so much blood. 
Instantly, too. Ugh. What do they do? Like, um, how do you stop that bleeding to get him anywhere? I guess they always have a hot, an ambulance there, right? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. You got to do it. I would think. You got to stop it immediately, though. Sure. Look how much blood he lost in the first half a second. I don't know if they got his jugular. Jesus, yeah, he, that he'd would be, be dead. insane. He'd be, much, he'd be much, dead. Much darker color. Dude, blood <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ugh. That has to be his jugular. Look how fast it comes out. What else could it be? It could just be oh. uh, any vein or artery in there. No, it's, no not if it it's comes a blood out pack. that fast. It's Vince, a Vince, blood Vince, pack. Vince McMahon is doing the NHL. Now. Yeah, blood on the ice. That's right. We're going to get some skates slicing some necks over here. It's WWE hockey. You're bleeding. The, the XHL. <laughs> XHL. I tried it with football. It flopped. That's right. It flopped. <laughs> Thanks, no being Anthony. But now we're doing it with hockey. No rules. They could skate around with razor blades and cut each other on the neck. That's what I want to see. Women goalies. They could be raped in the crease. That's right, raped. Wow, Vince. That's an insane idea. I am insane! <laughs> and you're fine. And I'm dreadfully sorry. <laughs> dreadfully. I want to apologize to anyone I offended by my nude, raped goalie comment. Oh, I didn't say they were nude before. Well, they're going to be nude. That's right. Nude. Nope. Completely naked. Everything's going. Press and I'm a child. No cups. Uh, the video will be up on onaradio.com of uh, Richard Zimnick getting slashed. You know what that reminds a long time ago? The neck. Bruins game, Gary Galley. Same thing happened to him, not in the neck, Ooh. though. Somebody cross checked somebody, so the guy's like feet came up and basically kicked this. Oh. Gary Galley, he had a scar going, like, started above his lip, went right through his lip. Oh. It was brutal. Oh, man. The greatest one ever was the goalie. Was it uh, the Sabres goalie back in the day? I forget. He was just bleeding. Oh yeah, he took. He got a... sliced right across the entire throat and was just. Oh yeah, that, that is a sick, sick tape. I, I think you can still find that on YouTube. Did he die or no? I, they were able to stitch him up, I believe. No, I don't think he died. He came, he came back out for the third period. No, <laughs> it's hockey a, man. That's hockey. what they do in hockey. Yes. <laughs> Look Silver at me. Duct no. Tape on his neck. <laughs> duct tape. <laughs> I don't know. We got to try to find that one. That one is uh, insane too. In other news, high school male basketball team. Oh boy, made player have sex with teammate. <laughs> Oh, uh, wait a minute. Basketball team? You know what? That's just bad. That's just bad parenting. Six on team. Okay. Teach your kid it. how to say no. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> Teach your kid how to say some things just aren't worth it. How bad do you want that varsity letter? I yeah. Mean, is it really that important? How much fun is pond hockey? I mean, come on. <laughs> Isn't that better? Uh, three members of a freshman high school boys basketball team are expected to be charged Monday with gross sexual in position Ooh. after an alleged assault on a teammate. Assiduous. Uh, Assiduous. A police officer wrote in a report that the alleged victim said a teammate made him have sexual contact with another teammate. I said touch his ball bag. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what he said? You think it was just something almost okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, what do you get like that, Bill? Oh, is that I mean, a yeah, cause, sick cause he shot? Actually, if right, they, they, here it is. <laughs> this is a hockey goalie oh. gets slit and cut up. This is, uh, yeah. It's Look, he doesn't know what to do. Oh, my God. The blood from today is worse than this blood. Yeah, out. but. No, it's not because the ref's not even looking at him. The guy's bleeding out like a stuck pig alone in the corner. Yeah, he's bleeding out. And a couple out. of guys are ready to duke it out. <laughs> They're ready to throw the gloves off. Yeah, we'll get that up on onaradio.com later, too. The cameraman couldn't get further away from that, too. He's just like, ooh, let me let me pan out it. Oh, he's bleeding immediately. Wow. Right from the neck. He grabs his neck. But it's and... spitting out. It's like... Yeah. It's a line of blood, man. It's a stream coming out of a... Jeez. And no one is paying attention. He's off to the side bleeding. Not even finally, the cameraman. They finally get help on the ice. And All then right. didn't didn't the guy have to come out with the scraper? And starts because the blood blood froze on the ice. Yeah, you got to scrape that off. <laughs> yeah, that's back when they had guys doing that. Now they have like those ice whores. That yeah, ice whores. Like <laughs> yeah, they sixteen year old girls. <laughs> yeah, they fill in the little holes. And... Oh, it's, just... <laughs> it's great. The Islanders started that tradition, and now all yeah. the other teams do it, or most of the other teams do it. I can't stand that. Moment. <laughs> ice whores. <laughs> uh, Heather Mills is going to represent. Oh, sorry. I always yell out, have some respect for yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you, the old codger? <laughs> have some respect for yourselves. Oh, you just make Granddaughter of mine would never be out there. Why? I just hate how they just think I'm such a moron that I can't, I can't even be talking about the game during that moment. Like, I need constant entertainment. <laughs> There's a stoppage of plays. Get some whores. Get some whores out there. <laughs> have them clean up the ice.
<laughs> oh, that's, that's brilliant. It adds to the experience. By the way, yeah. uh, backward, going backwards, Paul W. from Austin writes, he's, he effing skated off the ice. How do you guys glaze over that? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he was... He, well, he, you'll do something like that. In that situation, you, it's very hard to just kind of relax and lay down. You're going to run. Plus, yeah. you're on the ice. It's cold. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody, you, you ever hear of uh, you know people that when they're shot, uh, they always wind up running somewhere and collapsing on a stoop? Yeah, before she you shot. never get shot and go. Oh, let me call a cab. Hello. Yeah, I know I'm here. I'm shot. It's you try running somewhere. Just I gotta run yeah. somewhere. Fight or flight. Flight takes. Yeah, over. Yeah, flight takes over and bloop. You just kind of die. <laughs> That's how your brain's saying skate, skate, <laughs> skate, just skate, <laughs> skate away. <laughs> in other news, uh, Heather Mills is going to represent herself in the divorce case with uh, Paul McCartney. Why is she doing that? So she could talk to him. She's going to be the one like... Oh, boy. That's that's great. So that's going to be interesting. Uh, man faces child abuse charges after home circumcision. I wonder... Wait a minute. I wonder if that will work. Like, um, are you going to are you going to tell the jury that you and I never said this? Or did you ever say to me... That mm. might actually work, man. Um, I don't know. It might be harder for him <clears throat> to lie. And her inflection may be able to get a lot of points across that a, a lawyer wouldn't. Um... Like, did you ever uh, hit me when you were drunk? No, y you didn't. You, there was never a time we were sitting together and you hit me when you were drunk. In there the might pantry? Be a way, yeah, there may be a way right. uh, for inflection to mm, do without being to work both ways. to the jury. Remember uh, Colin Ferguson when he was um, defending himself? I have more respect for him, actually, than I do for her. But yeah, it's a bit of, <laughs> a, bit of a different he, case. He went out there and uh, he was like, now, when, and he would talk about himself as the um, defendant. He'd say, uh, now... When uh, the defendant pulled out a gun, tell me what happened next. And then the witness on the stand went, well, I saw you pull a gun out and you pointed it at me and you shot me. <laughs> so it really didn't work very well with him trying to separate himself. from. So I uh, shot you. Yes. 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 Okay. Yeah. So you're saying the defendant, you shot me. Yeah, Heather Mills is not denying that she's the ex-wife to be. <laughs> Do you recognize the pogo stick in this courtroom? <laughs> Looking right at you, love. <laughs> love. love. Yes, old Stumpy. Did you not have a nickname for George? Did you not refer to him as Tapioca under the hat? <laughs> I'd like to settle. I, I can't do the pills. Like settle. That looks bad. Hmm. <laughs> He was me friend. He was me bloke. He was me me. But you called him old Puddinhead, didn't she? Imagine if she starts talking about the sexual practices, if she can somehow yeah. tie mm -hmm. that into abuse or tie that into her case. You could really <clears throat> embarrass a guy. Yeah. He's a private guy, man. He doesn't want his... That'll get you to go to that back room and settle real quick. <laughs> oh, man, what happened? <laughs> That's a beetle, man. He should not have to go through uh, it. It's an old beetle now. Yeah, exactly. Hire a hitman. Good lord. <laughs> He's got some residu residuals, right? Residuals. <laughs> He'd end up in just a few. prison. Imagine that. Paul yeah. McCartney in prison. and Put potholes in front of her house. Just watch her attempt to walk and that leg snaps off. <laughs> just standing there looking at her like she's silly. Hires a hitman to break a knee. <laughs> he, hits, he hits the fake leg. Does she's, nothing. She still showed up. <laughs> oh. You hit the wrong one, mate. Blimey. We're, um, we're starting a new bit. What's that? We'll debut it here. Uh, Oscar moments, because we had so much fun with Grammy moments. With yes, the, we did with the gang. So now we uh, we're going to be doing Oscar moments. All right. Here's the first one coming in from Derek. The Opiate Anthony Show presents Oscar moments, memorable scenes from Academy Award nominated films. Today's Oscar moment comes from No Country for Old Men. Ooh. Well, look, I need to know where I stand to win. Everything. <laughs> How's that? You stand to win everything. Call it. All right, heads in. Well done. Don't put it in your pocket. Sir? Don't put it in your pocket. It's your lucky quarter. Stay tuned for more Oscar moments. Presented by the Opie and Anthony Show. Now, I hate to be critical. <laughs> I know what you're going to I don't know what bothers out. me more about that clip. A, the fact that Kenny is actually a better actor than Voss, or B, the fact that he he says, good, good job, before the coin hits. Before the coin hits. <laughs> you, you hear him say that, and then you hear, cling, cling. Good job. 
30 seconds. Clink. <laughs> Clink. <laughs> no, what I say, kid. <laughs> <laughs> Dummy. <laughs> Oh, is he a Beth or Kenny was at least had some kind of acting chops. Roland actually he has that natural nervousness. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Where it works in that situation we and doesn't him. in life. We love Roland. Yeah. Okay. Uh Chicago radio host suspended after anti uh, Semitic uh, remark. Yeah, go ahead, make make my day. <laughs> yeah? What? I usually have one sugar but this this year. <laughs> I sugars in it today. <laughs> Came back to see my we're going to need a bigger boat. <laughs> oh, <Roy Scheider. laughs> you ever seen 52 Pickup? That's a great Roy Scheider movie. You ever see that? Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Oh, my God. You guys got to watch it. He's married to Anne Margaret, and they blackmail him with this girl he's seeing. It's Clarence Williams III and, and uh, two other guys, and they, uh, oh, they, they kidnap his wife, and the guy puts heroin, gives her heroin, and, and mm. bangs her when she's all doped up. And then he gives her back to Roy Scheider. He goes, that's a fine bitch you got there, sport. Oh, God. She's old, but she still cooks. You know, he wants to go in. <laughs> oh, wow. Sport. He calls him sport. Judah, what's, Judah told me that Roy actually one time when he hosted SNL way back in the day actually tried to come out and do stand-up. And he said it's horrific. I don't know if you can find oh, the clip. Find anyway. Yeah, if you find it. That'd be good. Like really overselling the jokes and, and just completely bombing. <laughs> And if we had the clip, that that would well, yeah, that would somewhere. really tie it all together. <laughs> I'm an idiot. That well, would mean someone actually looking up Roy clips before the show today, right, Iraq? E Why would we do that? Yeah, yeah. of course not. Uh, should this guy have been suspended? Chicago talker sidelined from uh, WMVP weekend talk host Chet Cop Park has been suspended for comments he made on a show earlier this month. In an exchange with co-host Ben Finfer, he was asked, how do you spell Jewish? To which he responded, M-O-N-E-Y. I don't get it. It's spelled wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I spelled money that doesn't spell Jewish. In a statement, uh, this Kapak had to apologize, and he said, I made an offensive comment I truly regret. I sincerely apologize. He's off the air until February 23rd. Hmm. Well, what kind of show is it? I mean, that, if, 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 is it a legitimate news show or is it a comedy show? Or is it a goofy show? I don't know. And so, by the way, anyone that says, how, how can you spell Jewish? What was the set of that? Do we know anything about this show? Mm -mm. Do we have yeah, why audio? would that question be asked? Do we have any audio of that? Because like, like, they really lobbed it over the net. Yeah, he yeah. kind of just, here, take this. Take this and get suspended. And what kind of legitimate news guys <laughs> go, by the way, how do you spell Jewish? For the sake of the story on the air. <laughs> J E W I S H. Thank you. Thanks. We'll be back. I was using an H what? and a B and a couple of E's. Thank God you straightened that out. What's the matter with these people? <laughs> but he got suspended. So and wow, some of the people here on uh, Pal Talk are spelling it in ways that would get uh, them uh, more than suspended. Really? Yes. And then finally, I think we have people, uh, people. time for this really interesting story. Family and friends of a missing and injured Iraq war veteran are afraid he's covering his tracks. 24-year-old Eric Hall of Punta Gorda has been missing for a week. He recently stopped taking his pain medication for a leg injury he sustained in Iraq. He also may be suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder, according to his family. His family also says just before he disappeared, he was playing a video game that may have brought back some painful memories. You want to guess the game? Medal of Honor? Uh, Call of Duty. Call of Duty, yes. Yes, Call of Duty 4. So the guy's playing Call of Duty, and that might have, uh, you know, triggered something in his brain. Oh, boy. And then he went missing. Maybe he was just listening to uh, Bob Kelly's babbling on it, <laughs> and that was too much for him. <laughs> <laughs> just had to get away. Wow. Yeah, yeah that game. Well, the game, I, could, I, I wonder. I wonder if you're a, a vet. You've been through all that crap. You start playing that game. A lot of death. You know, shooting, snipers, me. I don't know the game. Oh, it it rules. Come on. It, it rules. It rules. How old are you? I'm old enough to say it rules. <laughs> uh, I, I'll never stop saying you it really rules. You really are just a big teenager. You see I'm the game? I'm a jerk. It rules. I play it all the time on my Xbox. <laughs> More to the story, which is kind of creepy. After playing Call of Duty, Eric Hall just got up and said he had to go. Uh, he rode away on a motorcycle that was later found on a roadside, still running. Hmm. Just like got off his motorcycle and left, walked into a swamp. He had been hallucinating and having flashbacks. Yeah. Wow. He. So. Uh, nasty. And you can't blame the guy. He was injured over there uh, fighting the war. During the same incident that he was injured, uh, he witnessed his best friend being decapitated. Oh, okay. That's By the way, wonderful. we're just under 4,000 dead. 
Oh. Something they like to kind of like brush under the old rug. But we're, we're heading toward 4,000 dead over oh. there. That's all. Oh, that's that's people all people deserve freedom. And they <laughs> yeah. want it. Yeah, of course they, they, they do. 4,000. Sure they do. 4,000. Democrats are uh, focusing on the election now. So they have yeah. other priorities. And uh, the war they said they were going to stop. No. Uh, nothing. I still want to see Obama get in. I really do. I want the economy to go back up. I don't know if that'll help, but it couldn't hurt. Yeah, well, good luck. It's just going to be a big distraction. If uh, if a Hillary or Obama gets in, it's a big distraction. Nah, it's going to be exciting. It is. It's going to be exciting for everybody. Exciting? Yeah, yeah comedians mm -hmm. will be good for us. McCain will be a bore, but oh, Hillary won't be. Neither will uh, Obama. <laughs> McCain's backstory is unbelievable. It's reading it in Newsweek. He can't raise his arms like uh, beyond a certain point for yeah. being repeatedly broken during captivity. Just beaten. I mean, it was just brutal. He had like bleeding in his stomach from having, you know, a percentage of rocks in his diet. <laughs> I mean, the guy just went through unbelievable. <laughs> Do you think the Asian uh, Americans feel like they would be best represented by him? Yeah. <laughs> or do you think there's still this grudge that he holds just looking Dude, there's no into way Asian could... people's eyes? There's no way. There's I mean, no way you, you couldn't be. You about flashbacks. Yeah. He's there's been... no way. No, that guy, he went through. Like, he's like the real Rambo. He, like, <laughs> yeah. he, literally, he literally was like, he, this is how they tell the story. Anyways. Like, he was flying towards his target. He knew there was a missile locked on him, and he did the Star Wars, stay on target. <laughs> stay and, on target. And he thought he could get away last time. Right as he dropped his bomb, it like blew off the, his right wing. And the second he ejected, he was going so fast, he immediately broke both arms and oh one of his legs. God. Lands in a swamp. A North Vietnamese guy came up with his rifle butt, broke one of his shoulders, and then it said stabbed him with a bayonet in his ankle and groin. <laughs> Jesus that's, that's, Christ. That's how this it, is uncomfortable laughing. That was his that, welcome that, to Vietnam. That's how it started. Wait, he, at, he landed at, with both arms broken and a leg broken? He landed like a parachute. No, no, no. He ejected from the plane, and I guess the that force That broke of his it, arms and his bro legs. Immediately broke both arms, one of his legs. He lands in the swamp, and then, you know, just for good measure... To add to the, oh, my God, I'm a POW now. The guy breaks his shoulder and stabs him a couple times with a bayonet. Oh. How long was he POW before? Something like Six five, years yeah, five and a half years or something. Five years he was a POW? Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and, they, and they, beaten they were... constantly during that because period. He, yeah, because he comes from like a, a, a military family. His family's like ridic like ridiculous, yeah. like fought in just about every war. And yeah, uh, the, the family also had this watch that they would pass from <laughs> generation to generation. So he had to deal Very, with that. Which was very ass. uncomfortable. <laughs> no, it's unreal. Uh, it's I'll be damned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's unbelievable. Yeah. Man, yeah. every day. So you think like when uh, uh, he's got to meet with an Asian group as president of the United States, he's going to give them the time of day? <laughs> Dude, they must have like one of those filters around the mic. So he can just, out the side of his mouth, have a little Tourette's, <laughs> just yell out some bad stuff about Asians. Well, he got uh, criticized, and, and uh, really, consider this before you dump out of it, because this is in the news. He got criticized for using the derogatory term gook. Uh, I remember that, yeah. Using that uh, term to describe his captors and the people that beat him, and was then criticized for it, and he said, I'm never going to call the people that had me captured and tortured me anything but that good for him so yeah you know, he he's sticking to that one he says I, he's not calling all asians that or even all vietnamese that just he meant his captors the people that beat him on a daily basis will always be that to him who criticized him uh, asian groups yeah oh. i know I mean, uh, go through that and then tell me if you wouldn't make up a good name for Dude, who did my that eyes to you were watering up like oh. reading it like not crying but just like uh, just, just like thinking of the, the pain. horror oh wow watering up is what we define as crying though <laughs> no, no, you know, you, it's more like you look in the sun uh, and that kind of thing you know yeah. that kind of there's all kinds of different watering i cry at his beauty <laughs> I cry at his beauty. <laughs> <laughs> all right we got to get out of here uh, we're going over to XM. Bill Burr's going to be on Letterman on Friday night. Friday, that's right. Taping tonight, but it's going to be shown Friday. And uh, I'll be in San Francisco this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. It's a holiday weekend, mm -hmm. which I call Sandy Franny. Sandy <laughs> <laughs> Franny. I'm kidding. Oh, that's gang. good. I, I like it. Frisco. Yeah, Frisco. Yeah. All right. Have a good day, guys. <laughs> Here we are, XM Satellite Radio. we got a lot of great stories still to do today. Bill Burr has made the walk with us today. The freezing walk. 
Yeah, uh, it's a little brutal. cold in New York for the first time uh, this winter, I think. Yeah, this winter finally hit. This is the weather I was hoping you guys were all having the entire time I was in L.A. Really <laughs> yeah. me off every time I called back. Yeah, it's not bad. It's like 40, 45. I'm like, damn it. I know. That annoys you when you're away. What's the matter, Jimmy? I get my fucking ears shocked. Ooh. Sorry. You all right? I, I didn't mean to yell while you're talking. Yeah, I just I sat down. That's the worst <laughs> feeling, man. A bzzzt. <laughs> yeah, when you're away on vacation and stuff in a, some nice warm place, you always hope where you live is freezing cold. Oh, you want the apocalypse. Yeah, and then they're like, no, it's been real mild. We're out. The second you left, it was just, oh, you're like, yeah, you go, God fuck damn yourself. It. Yeah. Uh, Bill said, remind me to tell you what an old guy, did you say? Old guy said oh, yeah. about my car? Yeah. So uh, we left the other joint, Bill's like, oh, yeah, I got, I got the, uh, the, the, the hybrid. The, the Prius. Of course you there. did. But I got to tell you, for L.A., it, it literally is a perfect car. I drove it to Vegas. It was, it was once we got to the mountains, dude, it was awful. I, I was driving up the hill and it's ah, coming from my life. I was like, what the hell is that? Literally, it was the engine screaming. Like, <laughs> screaming in screaming. pain. It was, it was ridiculous, man. I, like, I forgot it has like a 1.6 liter with this, you know, this electronic gizmo. But I'm telling you, it's great for city and everything. So, um, just because you don't, know, Anthony, you've been trashing my car. I'm literally going to the course. gym. And it's this cute, you know, this old guy. Everybody loves an old guy, and he's just sitting there. And as I get out of the car, I go walk by. He goes, hey, excuse me. Excuse me. I'm like, like, I'm like, what's up? I thought you were like directions or something. I help across the street. He goes, I got to ask you a question. How do you like your little wind-up car? <laughs> <laughs> And I'm so oh, bad in the moment. Fucker. I should have been like, how do you like it? It depends, you old fuck, right? <laughs> yeah. But I literally just answered. I'm like, well, you know, it's great in the city. I just had this oh. long, stupid conversation with <laughs> <You're> him. <laughs> Not even realizing this, this old fart was just trashing it's me. Insulting you, and you're just giving him answers? I am. Yeah, I like it. It's good. Yeah. It was... I was saying earlier, hey, I heard your mother's a whore. Well, she's always been sociable. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking moron what, I am. What's worse than when someone insults yeah. you and you forget, oh, yeah, I do this for a living? <laughs> Dude, I am so bad. Like, I'm like, three minutes later, I'm like, did that guy, hey, you just called my mother a whore. I should have said something. <laughs> should have defended her there. I. Came off looking like an ass. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was on the treadmill, like, for the rest of my workout. I just kept thinking of snappy answers that I should have said. Oh, yeah, that you should have said. <laughs> but didn't. <laughs> How is the wind-up car? <laughs> Dude, I got to admit, it's an undefendable car. If you're going to say it's a gay-looking car, I, I can't defend it. They got to just make them look cooler. I think you know what? Help. I didn't realize Honda has one that actually looks. It actually, looks all right? That actually looks like a car. It has full-size <laughs> tires. <laughs> yeah, you got those little... Skate All I'm gonna say is if is if you're gonna tires. if you're gonna take it for a test drive, make sure there's a hill or something. <laughs> you yeah, can go up a hill so you can hear the engine <laughs> just screaming at you. Why? Yeah. And is there a huge, huge savings on gas? Huge. Huge. Huge, yeah. Yeah. Like everybody I know is paying like forty five, fifty bucks. I'm like twenty seven. Yeah. That's the time when you just smile. And that fills your tank up, and then you oh, can yeah. just drive around. Yeah, and for if you if you know how to drive else. the car, you can drive for like fucking two weeks. It's really? Great. Oh, dude, it's awesome. You know how to drive the car? Like, yeah, you can't like, be you know, gassing it. No, and... I know, yeah, because if you stomp on the gas, then it switches over to gas, and then you'll, 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 I can't say just go through it like a regular tank, but it'll definitely start going down. Like, uh, I know a guy, like, he's a, he's a maniac. He goes, dude, yeah, I'm not, I'm not really seeing the savings. And it's just like, you, you're driving like a moron. If you drive any car, basically is what I've learned through reading about this. You drive any car like a maniac, and that even includes like stomping on the brakes. You get yeah. like way less than what they projected, which of course when they drove it is completely on flat land with yeah. like a tailwind. Yeah. Optimum <laughs> circumstances. Two scientists pushing the car at the same time, <laughs> but uh, a sail on top. <laughs> yeah, no yeah, resistance whatsoever, right? They, uh, yeah, I, no, I know that, but but some people, like I'm pretty aggressive with my driving. Uh, I, I'll just say that, like I'm I'm kind of on the gas a lot. Um, if there's a spot. That's opened up, and I see it's closing. I kind of zoom up a little bit, yeah. and then I got to step on the brakes, get over, jam on the gas again. So I'm going through probably twice as much gas as I should be. Yeah, but I see, I don't have the patience to drive one of those hybrids like that. Do you? Do you like? Does this? You do you nothing? give the gas very slow and? And kind of just no, you just don't. You don't like. First of all, when you have a one point six liter, there's, there's no point in stomping on the gas. <laughs> it's, it's not going to do anything. You know that it's like throwing it into like like an ice bath. <laughs> you just feel like, like fuck. 
<laughs> but um, no, I'm telling you, but like, dude, stop and go traffic is basically like traffic is so fucking ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous to have a nice car in L.A. unless you work like the night shift at UPS. <laughs> You That's the actually, only time you can actually use the highways for what they were meant for. You know? Yeah, driving fast. Yeah, oh, or yeah. you're just stuck in traffic. No, but out there, in traffic, it's, it's good. I was saying, no, the traffic out there. It's, it's, you ever no, no, it? in traffic, it, your car does, Dude, does it's well. it's fucking awesome. Yeah, because like, when you're going that slow, it just shuts off. It's, it's all like, electric. Totally electric. It's like a golf cart. Exactly. Yeah, it really is. Just a fancier golf cart. Aren't you afraid so, it'll break down, though, and just run out of spark? That would scare me. Dude, it's a Toyota. Are you kidding me? They're like cockroaches. Those things never die. <laughs> It just keeps, it'll just keep going, but yeah. I got to tell you, the traffic out there, dude, it's like, you remember that, the Truman Show, every time he, the movie, every time he try to figure it out and try to get off, they, they'd start like a fire and there'd be all this stuff coming, <laughs> that's, yeah. that's literally what happens out there. You're finally uh, going to be able to make a left, and then there's like somebody walking across the street, and it can't just be like a regular young person who can walk at a brisk pace, it'd be like some old Vietnamese lady with like one of those, I'm picking rice hats, <laughs> and you're just sitting there like, really, really, this is the person? It's just a hybrid. Up everything. It's, it's not going to hurt her. I'll just, I'll just <laughs> go right her. over her. She'll get up. Yeah, I'll bump her out of the way. Hey, we went. We allowed you to go by by real fast with that comment you made, Anthony. Sean in North Carolina, go ahead. Uh, Ant saying he's got an aggressive style of driving. That's kind of like Hitler saying, "Yeah, I've got some ideas from a uh, social restructuring." Oh, well, a little. Uh, I say it's a little aggressive. That's all. Although I want to say hi to the guy in the pickup truck because I was driving out to my mother's. Uh, out there, exit uh, sixty something was that way out there on the expressway, and I like getting out there pretty quick. So I took the rocket ship there yesterday, and uh, the guy in the pickup truck with a wow sticker, and I kind of pulled up past him, and he knew who I was. Uh, then I proceeded to just do a hundred and ten miles an hour. To so get why you want to thank away him for that? Him. Um, uh, just to, uh, for waving, he kind of gave a good wave, little thumbs up. Little recognition. He had a wow sticker on his car, which was nice. I saw a lot of them yesterday uh, on the way out there, We're which is nice there. to see. Yeah, absolutely. So still uh, pick them How up. How did he happen to see you? Because your car's on MySpace. I would, well, <laughs> yes, maybe that was <laughs> With it. With the license plate, <laughs> Anthony's <laughs> car on the back. <laughs> I'm on the radio. Fans of the show know what I drive. <laughs> he bought the first one, basically. And, so. and <laughs> there's now five out there. So pretty I good odds. Those and some Acura tried to. Um, like be be a fast guy, like I love when people and, and this isn't this is, I'm not racing people, but it insults me when a crappy like car where where you know, the spoiler is on the back and and, and you can tell that it's somebody all snobby these people are beneath me. Somebody probably is driving it of some other ethnic background that is um, stereotypically drives these smaller cars and puts spoilers that are three feet high on the back and spray paints their rims gold and stuff like that. Eh, it's probably one of those. Cheers. Uh, yeah, exactly. And uh, he was trying to keep up with me, and I was stuck in traffic, so I really couldn't do anything. But then once it opened up, you got to show him. You do have to. There's just, just something him, that just goes, slap him around I got to show you that it was stupid of you to even think you're keeping up with me. So I, I took off. Really fast. Hey, if we if we actually had a race, my car and your car, how many minute oh, head wow. start do you think you could give me? An hour. If we were doing, <laughs> if we were doing like, doing wow. the, we were doing the quarter mile. Just give me like an eight second head start. Yeah, eight. I could give you an eight second head start. And still beat That'd be you. a great YouTube video. <laughs> it's just the Prius. Um, just got to communicate. MSNBC not talking yet. There, Jimmy. Sorry. That's all right. Not I mean, talking. We're, we're trying to get MSNBC on the uh, show today because the, to the Keith Overman crap. Yeah. Uh, left uh, messages and emails out to their PR department. Okay. Yes, we are trying to get them on to ask um, some questions. Uh, this is a good day for Bill to be here because he, cool. he, he likes looking at sports. You like looking at old-time sports, too, for the most part, right? Yeah, I love that like stuff. You love the days when there were you know, bench-clearing brawls in hockey. Yeah, the benches faced each when, other. When fans like destroy the field after their team won the championship, you go old school oh, with yeah. this stuff, right? Uh, Anthony... I, and I remember this. I don't think Anthony remember this because he brought this up in the office today. There's a story on um, stadium memorabilia, and uh, they, they're talking about how fans took tools to Yankee Stadium back in 1973. Do you remember this? No. They were remodeling uh, Yankee Stadium, and uh, the fans were aware of that. And I think they were like going to remove all the seats and put in new seats that were a little more comfortable. So... Fans actually went to Yankee Stadium back in 1973 with tools so they could take their own seat home. 
Oh my god! And, and yeah. nobody did anything. Either. I know. I was, I was saying, probably what? walked in with like a tool belt, like <laughs> right. the hammer hanging yeah. off the side. I was saying, was there any security for anything in the seventies? Like you just kind of walked through a, a metal detector at the airport. That was it. All your friends and family could go up there to the oh, gate yeah. with you. And then uh, this, this situation: you're taking tools in to a Yankee Stadium, so when they shut it down. Uh, to rebuild it for a couple of seasons, you could just take whatever you want and walk out with it, which they did. Like now, people have uh, stadium seats from uh, 1973. All yeah, over. that's all that's over like uh, when, when Hank Hank Aaron was doing like the home run chase, you know, uh -huh. beat Babe Ruth. He was getting death threats on a daily basis. He hits the home run. There's like drunks running out on the field, <laughs> slapping him on the back yeah, and stuff. Yeah, this that? guy's heart's going a mile a minute. Is this the guy? 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 <laughs> <laughs> right, me right. <laughs> It's ridiculous. There was no security. There was no like I was reading like uh, as far as like hijacked planes and that type of thing. Like back, I think as much up until like the early seventies, I don't even think there was metal detectors. I forget. I can't quite remember like when they actually put those in. You just basically yeah. went to the airport and you know with your mutton chops <laughs> and Fu Manchu, and you just walked right up to the gate. Yeah, just walk right up to the gate. And I, I remember that like friends and family could be right there and go, okay, bye. Yeah, they greet you when you got off the plane. Yeah. We used to always meet, yeah, meet my dad. Right there. Hey, yeah, you didn't how have you to doing? be on the flight to go through the, uh, through the security. You could just go and, and grab. I remember grabbing my parents. Mm -hmm. Some guy tried to look at my penis in the airport bathroom. Ooh. Years nice. ago. Nice. That would happen. Did you let him? No, I left. Aw. I, I went out and smoked a cigarette Fucking uncomfortably. Tease. <laughs> and so mom and dad neglected to mention it. That their son's <laughs> delicious cock just got stared at. Some guy with a fucking beard. <laughs> 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 but you could really just do anything you want. You could literally have like a box, like on a cartoon that said TNT on the side of it. <laughs> yeah, like some with that, sir. <laughs> Is that a bomb? No, no. I work for the network. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the, the uh, like hospitals with the smoking <laughs> kills me too. They're just walking around in the hospital room, uh, and the doctor would be operating. Smoking. Yeah, hanging out of the side of your mouth. <laughs> Ah, people in the waiting rooms just smoking, and the ER smoking. Wow. We finally figured out it's a fucking hospital, at least not in here. <laughs> Going back to the stadium seats, by the way, uh, back in 73, when Yankee Stadium closed for two seasons to be remodeled, fans carried tools to the last game of the season and tore the place apart. Okay. Seats from the old Yankee Stadium before the mid-70s renovation were sold for $7.50. Today, a mint-conditioned version of those seats sell for $2,500. Mm, nice. It's a big jump up. Sure Who the hell would, would, would pay for that? I've never mm. understood that sports memorabilia. My dad does that. Like, I get, well, actually, you know something? Old school stuff I could see buying. But my dad will buy like new stuff, not realizing that it's an industry now. He'll <laughs> yeah. call me up and be like, Bill, you're not going to believe this. <laughs> are, are you ready for this? I got, I'm telling you, I got an official Manny Ramirez jersey. Are you ready for this? He's like all excited. Autographed. And I'm just like that. He's he's fucking sitting at a table. He probably signed 700 in that hour. Yeah. You and 700 other people have that jersey. Now have not this gonna, worthless jersey. It's not going to be worth shit. It's actually worth less because there's writing on it. <laughs> Dude, he's got, all, he's got all that. Like a Movon jock strap. It's like that. <laughs> Nobody cares. Hey, uh, corn <laughs> Cornhusker from Iowa. In 1987, I went to Washington National Airport to say goodbye to my cousin. I was at the gate, but she had already boarded the plane. The airline person let me on the plane to say goodbye to her without screaming in any way. On the plane. Amazing. Could you still do that? <laughs> wow, showstopper. Hey, yeah, because we're all thinking, what? No. Where? Travis has stuff like what? Uh, my dad actually has a huge collection. We bought two seats from Memorial Stadium, where the Orioles used oh. to play. Uh, Do you sit in them? No. Do you ever my just think somebody sat, sat here and watched Boog Powell? Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, uh, Who gives a fuck? <laughs> oh, it smells like beer farts. Yeah. <laughs> who gives what a, a shitty fuck? piece of memorabilia. Somebody who never played baseball. Some regular jackass sat here. Sat here. Sweating his ass off during Bunch of jackasses. We have a brick from uh, Memorial Stadium, mm -hmm. and we have dirt from the infield, which I wow. hope is really from the infield. Oh, yeah, it's not. <laughs> yeah. No. Who cares? I remember uh, so, uh, my I dad got, got me a, an autographed uh, framed picture of Muhammad Ali, 
and to prove its authenticity, they had a picture of Muhammad Ali signing a picture. <laughs> so, oh, there you go. There that is. was my picture. <laughs> I love a certificate of authenticity yeah. that they come with. Does this have a certificate? Like, like the people would go, no, it's fake. We're going to put one in that says so. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking. And that big stupid gold seal. Like you're yeah. a second grader and you spelled all the words right. Yeah. They just stomp that, stamp it right on there. And it, it doesn't prove anything, those certificates of authenticity. It's just somebody that filled something out. Yes, this is authentic, number, blah, blah, blah. They stamp it and throw it in with the crap you just And not, not to be an asshole, his signature was completely smooth. Really? Yeah, and the guy's got Parkinson's. I mean, I don't know how, I don't know how mm -hmm. he... That would be rough. Fucking um, memorabilia, mm -hmm. like, salesmen. I think so many of them are thieves. Um, I love when they catch these scumbags. That's why I like getting stuff signed, like, when I know it's signed by the person. It's like, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know why I'm saying that like it's an original thought. <laughs> um, I like an autograph that's actually signed by the person. By the really? person that uh, you're thinking is the autograph speech. it's from. Yes. Yeah. Boo. Hey, Madam Misty, you want to make a speech? Speech. <laughs> we might be onto something here about the 70s. Halitosis Kid from Baltimore, he writes, What about getting pulled over after a couple of beers, only to be told by the cop to go home and be careful? The Plenty 70s of those stories. rocked. <laughs> Plenty of those stories where uh, yeah, the go cop Yeah, go straight would, home, uh, sleep it off. Yeah. Is what it, are you doing? Or get in the car, I'll drive you home if you're that close. 70s definitely a very good decade. They pull the in general. I I heard one. They pull the keys out and the cop threw it, not far but kind of off the road into the grass, and goes, uh, "Just go to sleep." He goes, "You'll find that when it gets light out, you'll find your keys," and just left them there to sleep. <laughs> they used to also just take your keys and come back in a few hours. And go, they right, should now come you can back. Drive. Oh yeah. What the hell were they thinking? They worked with drunk cars. driving could, deaths were up, like, ridiculously high. You couldn't get high. hurt in those cars. Those things were huge. <laughs> you ever see those? That's where global warming started, all those drunk drivers slamming into all those trees. <laughs> <laughs> those huge cars. You ever see those films in school, the Hamburger on the Highway films? They were all those big, heavy vehicles that didn't have the crumple zones and, <laughs> you know, all the, the technology that we have now. So you just got... The steering columns used to go directly from the, the like pinion box on the wheel to the steering wheel. So it was an amount of, it amounted to like a fucking javelin that was <laughs> your steering wheel was on the tip of a javelin that whatever you hit, it would just go right through your chest. And I saw uh, pictures of this one guy who was in a pickup truck and he was slumped over the wheel. The uh, steering wheel was bent like a, a dome. Right. It had bent down and it was in his chest. It was just like, oh. it, 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 he was impaled on the steering column. Is he dead? Fuck yeah. Gone. Just completely fucking dead. Hey. <laughs> they were horrible cars, those old ones. I remember uh, being in the passenger seat, uh, no seatbelt, my father driving, and a fucking, a metal dashboard, not covered with any kind of foam. You knocked on it, it was metal. And no uh, seatbelt, so when he jammed on the brakes, he put his magic dad arm up. <laughs> that, you know, is good for point one mile per hour. Anything over that, and you're just flying into the dashboard. Yeah, that's good if you run over a gum wrapper. Yeah. yeah, the, yeah the dad it's... arm out. Anything else, you're fucking paralyzed. The dad arm is not going to protect you. You're breaking his arm in the process, too. Poor exactly. Dad. So your chest, yeah. your teeth, and his arm and are his all, arm all busted. <laughs> hey, I don't want to miss this moment. Matt in Melrose, he writes, Speaking of no security, there's a saucy picture of my dad in the Globe, Boston Globe, of him tackling... Robert Parrish, right on the court after the Celtics won a playoff game in the 80s. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Man, I was tackling him. Just tackling him. You would be One beaten of the star to player. a pulp, yeah. taken to jail, and, and, and you'd Trampled be really in trouble. Horse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The horses would come out. Sure. What's that one where Chris Shambliss hits that walk-off home run? Playoff game against the oh, yeah. Royals. He could barely touch all the bases, yeah, right? Barely. I remember another one, Reggie oh. Jackson trying to zigzag into the dugout, lowering his shoulder. Oh, yeah, driving into some people. Some accountant just gets drilled right into the on-deck circle. <laughs> With a famous Bobby Thompson. The Giants win the pennant! The Giants win yeah. the pennant! He, he made, I think it was Bobby Thompson, right? He gets yeah. to the third base, and they all mob him, and everybody's having fun. They're like, Hank oh, Aaron trying to run around a ball. with his fucking awful, fat, suburban guy gut after hitting that home run. <laughs> Remember Hank Aaron? The fucking guy's running with him. Matt in North Carolina. North Carolina loves this radio show. we got to go down As there. As they should. What's up, Matt? Hey, guys. How you doing, man? Hey. All right. Uh, listen, back when I was in Cub Scouts, I was probably 12 years old, the local cop. Come from a town of about 1,200. We go out to the country, and he goes, uh, 
Yes, you know, he was the Cub Scout leader, but he was also the local sheriff. So, you know, we go outside, and he goes, oh, well, let me shoot your gun. So he's sitting out there, and we're shooting at fish in this river. So, so you're shooting the cop's gun? Yeah. He was just, I mean, he was just like an old fat bastard. See, that was, those were the days they didn't have to count the bullets. Now you fire off no, your gun, yeah, and man. there's lots of paperwork. Back then, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah why don't you shoot my gun a few times? <laughs> good old 70s. I'm telling you, we're on to a bit here. The good old 70s. <laughs> you let him shoot his gun. Thank Nothing you, Matt. mattered. Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> no. You really did. caught the clap, you high five someone, you washed your dick off, and you kept going. <laughs> <laughs> fucking men were men. <laughs> fucking. <laughs> you didn't even go get treatment for the clap. You just fucking bled it out like a man. <laughs> Grab that fucking porcelain until it's, it's, it's wheezed itself through your system. <laughs> Let's go to Tom in Philly. Tom. Hey, how's it going, guys? Hey. Uh, we were drinking, uh, like 1979, 1980, cruising around drinking in the snow. Uh, Volkswagen Beetle. I hit an embankment, flipped over. <laughs> Beer cans came out, flipped the car back over, cranked it, took off. Cop pulled us over. Nailed us for littering. Two hundred hour fine. <laughs> you got <laughs> littering from the beer cans that fell out of the car. Yep. Oh, that's great. The good old seventies. Let's say hi to Dave on Long Island. Dave. In nineteen seventy eight, I had my first car was a fifty eight Chevy. I drunk drove into a telephone pole, and all I did was bend the fender in the bumper. <laughs> 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 Uh, let's go to Jay in Newark. Jay. Guys, back in the 70s, Washington Square Park was the biggest party place. You go there on the weekend, it would be filled with people, guys walking around with bags, and huge bags of weed right out in the open. You could get anything you wanted. They didn't even worry about cops or anything. It was like right in the open. You did whatever you wanted. You got acid, anything. It was unbelievable. Yeah, they'd come up and ask you, you know, right when you pass by them real slow, they'd be like, you know, weed, weed. Weed, Mary, weed, Mary Jane, weed, Mary Jane, you know, mesk, 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 Mary Jane. mesk. You know how they do it now when you walk by? They go, "You all right? You all right?" Really? Yeah, they say, "You all right?" What's how do you man? know this? Because I walk by Washington Square all the time. Yeah, but don't you think I would just think people are concerned about uh, well, actually, how I feel? No, they'll always how do you answer that, Jimmy? <laughs> no, I'm not all right. I'm fine. My, thank you. My foot hurts. <laughs> okay. They'll say, "What's up, man?" And I'll I say, "What's up?" As a courtesy, I'll say, "Hey." And I go, you all right? And I go, yeah, I'm fine. I go, I'm all right. Yes, I'm all right. Like you, you have to let them know you you're being courteous, but you're not fucking saying you're all right because you want drugs. I'm. Uh, you know what if you say street uh, survival? That's 101. right. Yeah, you had it. Like, I, had I don't know how you learned that. I had a scary thing one time. I was walking by Washington Square, and there was some undercover narcos doing something. And there was a couple guys they were looking at, and I happened to walk up with these guys along McDougal, and fucking these undercovers pulled over like a van, and they grabbed me with these two guys. And this one cop, he's he's every fucking bad cop, every frightening cop. Shut the fuck up and get up against the fucking van. And the one guy tried to smart mouth him. And oh, was he a fight? He like, grabbed the back of his back and pushed him against the go. You want to go to fucking jail, asshole? I'm a cop, you idiot. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, uh, be very polite. And he's like, what, what are you doing? Or what the fuck? Are you? He was really nasty. I'm like, oh, I'm a comedian. I'm just going to the comedy store to do a spot. And he's like, oh, okay, you can go. <laughs> <laughs> but the other guy tried to get smart with him. Like, what, did I do something, officer? Oh, uh, that's one of those never voices, good. Oh, you don't do that. No. Yeah, can't sass some shithead. This no. is a fucking sitcom. It's almost as bad as saying... That's sitcom, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's almost as bad as saying, I know my rights. Yeah, they never want to hear that. I know my rights, and your rights will be available to you uh, in court. Right now, this is my <laughs> fucking show. I can do whatever I please to you. The judge is going to believe me. Yeah. No matter what happens, I'll look around. Any video? I don't see any. So I'll pummel you a little bit. <laughs> we'll take you down to the station house where we have a room with no cameras where we can really get in there and <laughs> fuck you <laughs> up. Have some fun. Uh, a, lot, a lot of phone calls coming in. We got Ron in Montana. Ron, what's up? Hey, I wanted to tell you about our driver's ed instructor. Okay. He was a great guy. We used to drive over the big hole because he liked to fish like crazy. He would drink beer the entire time. <laughs> you're, wait, you're great, <laughs> great guy. <laughs> you hear me? The... <laughs> well, I'm losing you. <laughs> no, you're not losing us. We're we're stupefied <laughs> at this point. All right, thank you, sir. Uh, Mark in South Carolina. <laughs> hey guys, you rock. Hey, we had an eighth-grade history. We were talking about the Revolutionary War. Our teacher brought a fifty-caliber musket 
into the classroom. And to show us what it was like, he took it outside the classroom, let every one of us shoot a fifty caliber musket. <laughs> hey, you don't see that happening anymore. No, no. Oh, no, no, but that was the coolest thing. I mean, there's you know, a bunch of little kids, the gun's longer than they are, you know, blowing their arms out, making smoke. It was awful. I loved it. There used to be um, shooting classes in, in high school. What? Like, high school students could shoot. And um, you would bring, I believe me, this is before my day, but um, the guy at the gun store was telling me this. And y you would see students on the subway with rifle cases just because they were going on the to shooting subway class. and they were going to shooting class and uh like it was nothing to see high school kids with rifles in the subway could you imagine walking in the subway with a rifle now <laughs> it just ain't ever gonna happen without you just being shot Cannot. Yeah, but nobody ever did anything either, right? No. Is anyone else? No, there wasn't. No one, <laughs> I, I, I doubt there was one shooting from these kids. They were just going to school. It was like going you know, with your pencils, <laughs> except you go with the uh, Is anyone else dis gun. disturbed by Kenny's earmuffs? <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with Yeah, you? I was a little disturbed Put earlier by them. back on. He's six foot five and he's wearing earmuffs. <laughs> Look at this fucking <laughs> I'm cold. <laughs> He's listening to his iPod, uh, no, his fucking little Walkman, WDMB. <laughs> <laughs> There's just something creepy about a six foot five guy wearing earmuffs. Earmuffs. I'd need to keep my ears warm. <laughs> Over 40%. Kenny, why not a hat? No? You don't do the hat? No. Anybody can wear a hat. I understand. Yeah. He's so big that his heart can't pump the blood up to his ears so they get cold. <laughs> <laughs> You know he has a big thoroughbred heart. Oh, just to keep sure. it secretariat. <laughs> They're gonna weigh that thing when he dies someday. <laughs> it's it's more powerful than your Prius engine. Yeah, oh, exactly. Put his heart under the hood. <laughs> Let's go to Darren in North Carolina. Darren. Yes, guys. That a story. Um, back about '93, buddy and I had been drinking. Uh, decided that we needed to leave, so we headed out. We get about a couple of miles up the road to get a patch of ice my jeep spins around so we're pointed back in the direction we came from don't really realize it uh get up the road about a mile officer pulls us over i can't really communicate with him so my buddy just tells him yeah we're headed back to the apartment he says okay get your asses there safely i wake up the next morning laying in a puddle of vomit my jeep still running all the doors open the seventies. I was distracted because we're having a phone problem, and yeah, it's we had a phone problem last week, noises. and there's still a phone problem today. So I don't know. Why don't we, why don't we uh, take a break? <laughs> What's wrong with the phones? It makes that um, feedbacky sound. Something's turned up. Yeah. All right. Bill Burr in studio. He's doing Letterman on Friday night. It's Opie and Anthony. It's the Opie and Anthony show. Thanks for checking us out today. We appreciate it. On a Monday. Yuck. Uh, let's go to Buffalo. It's Jeff. What's up, Jeff? Yeah. It, am I on? Yeah. I yeah, think so. Uh, I got a story from back in the 70s. Uh, I live out in Chittawaga. It's next to Buffalo, New York. Opie, Opie probably knows where it is. Uh, back in about 73, I was rolling down Union Road. Uh, and I was driving. I was behind me. I was, I was straight, 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 straight. I couldn't even see straight. And uh, I just didn't want to pull over because I didn't really feel like getting in trouble. But about four miles down the road, a Chicawaga police officer pulled his car right in front of me. I didn't have to hit him. Wells are beaching themselves hey, all over the world because of this phone call. Sorry Jeez. about your call, dude. We're not fucking with you. It just, we're very frustrated because our phones are not working. Yeah, so. our phones suck. Um, where's, where's, can we get Mars in here? We said that <laughs> an hour ago. We asked for this 20 minutes ago. We should really tear down a wall. We're ready to completely lose our minds. I'm uh, well. It's it, one little thing after another. It's driving us nuts today. Uh, the the phone started messing up last week. Why aren't they fixed yet? Sorry, Jeff, but uh, it's too distracting to go to the phones. Ah, we don't need phones. We only have every line lit, and they have good stories about what we're talking about today. But don't worry about that. We're such great broadcasters. We'll have to do a show without the phones. Thank you, Washington. Thank you, Don Wicklin. Thank you. <laughs> Is Mars yeah. in today? Carolina's got good stories, too. Yeah. Third grade teacher chewed tobacco in class. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let's uh, go to Jason. Let's see if this will work. Jason, Carolina, what's up? 
Hey, man, uh, my third grade teacher used to uh, chew chewing tobacco during class. He used to, he'd read his stories and spit. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. Spit. Yeah, see, the Can 70s. Yeah, go ahead. Can I give a shout out to him in case he's still alive? Yeah, get, well, if he was uh, chewing tobacco yeah, he's probably, in yeah. the 70s. <laughs> Yeah, Mr. Brandon in Arizona, Tumbleweed Elementary. You rock. All right, you rock. Yes, he he did. He's probably dead. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Thank <laughs> you, sir. Let, let's go to Jerry. Uh, Jerry, Texas, what's up? Hi, guys. How's it going? Hey, right. Back in 1978, we was leaving the lake. Police pulled my mom and her friend over, told us to get off the side of the trails in the truck and lay down in the back. Air mattresses were back there. My mom took two of us, put us in the front, after the police pulled us over, we left, hit the interstate, air turbulence got up underneath the mattress and threw three kids out of the back of the truck. They die? Two of them did. <laughs> Jesus. Whoa, funny and then what would the cops funny say? Story. All right, pick uh, up those dead kids and uh, get yeah. yourself home. Get home. Uh, don't worry about it. I don't want to do the paperwork. Why would you share such a horrific story like that? Because it was great. I didn't like one of them. <laughs> wow! God damn, we uh, we you, used sir. to get loaded in the back of a pickup truck when I lived out in California. There, my when, father. When you were six? Uh, no, no, a little older than that. When I was six or or so, my father was uh, he rode motorcycles, and he'd just pop me on top of the gas tank, and I'd ride around like that. Nice. And if anything ever happened, <laughs> I'd be so dead. But uh, the pickup trucks are great. All the kids would just be loaded into the back of a pickup truck, and. Yeah, just go down the freeway. Sure, why not? You know, you're doing 65, 70 yeah. miles an hour. There's seatbelt. What? You don't even. You don't even have to crash. When the the brake got hit a little too hard, all the kids would smash up against the front side of the bed. And then when the gas got hit too hard, you'd all slide down and hit the tailgate that could just open. I remember the tailgate also, yeah, on a few bumps, the tailgate would just kong open up. Like ah, the tailgate's open. We had a dog jump out on the freeway. Dead? No, it rolled really a lot and cut himself up. It's the 70s. And then just ran over to the side of the That's road. Trying to get and out Kind of just sat there, and uh, you know, uh, hey blue, blue dog, come here. And and got back in the back of the truck. That's what you called it, or that's what you did. Is that a blue <laughs> dog? <laughs> so you made him feel all better. With yeah, his he was knees. hurting. We want to take his mind off of it. Give me that pink lipstick. I'll show you. <laughs> Come on. Oh God. Mark in Canada. Here's what happens when you suck a dog's dick. Okay. At first oh, he's like, <laughs> he doesn't like it. Then all of a sudden he goes. <laughs> 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 Mark in he Canada. settles in a little. <laughs> Mark, what's up? Uh, our high school still operates a gun range within the school. Really? Yeah, but, twenty-two caliber for local uh, army and air cadets. But it's Canada. You're not allowed to have like guns. <laughs> yeah, yeah well, right. You're only allowed to have health care. <laughs> yeah, well, there are those <laughs> stupid that health care. Love so much. All right, thank <laughs> you, sir. Hey, uh, there's a good story in the paper that Bill reminded us of. Uh, the tranny that was, what, stabbed to death? Yeah. Mistaken identity? Oh, no. Well, the, what is this? Uh, Nesha was just one of the girls. What paper, buddy? Well, we got uh, Daily News, page 20. Okay. Nesha? Sinesha Stewart was Sinesha, not huh? your everyday sight in the Bronx. A six-foot man in high heels and lipstick, but was accepted was as family by those around the victim. Loved ones said yesterday. So they were shocked to learn that their 25-year-old uh, transgender neighbor was stabbed to death Saturday by an ex-con who told cops he flew into a rage when he found out his date was not a woman. Wow, she was passing. Mm. Oh, you think she is? No, I'm saying if he, if he didn't know. Well, Nesha was a friend of the whole building, a really nice person who didn't deserve that. I called him her. Uh, I called him her out of respect. Uh, police responded to a dispute. Uh, she was stabbed several times. They arrested Steve McMillan, who was still inside uh, Stewart's apartment. He was waiting to be arraigned on murder charges late last night. Police sources said McMillan was a John who flew into a rage after discovering Stewart, a prostitute, was not a woman. So does this guy get off or what? Hmm. No. Why not? I'll take him in a murder because somebody <laughs> fucking has a dick. <laughs> what about the psychological trauma? Yeah. For what? He went in, he went insane when he saw a cock when he was Shanisha was uh Yeah. Was Sean. She had breast implants mm -hmm. and other plastic surgery to look more like a woman. 
False advertising right there. I think yeah. right, false advertising, you can get away with it. Yeah, you go to the Better yep. Business Bureau, but there's no reason to kill somebody. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a lot of people saying that it was very obvious, like, when she turned around, that it was a man. Oh, yeah. Dressed like a, a Those woman. Those booty shorts and the ball sack hanging off the side. <laughs> right. yeah, exactly. Dead giveaway. Hi, Daddy. <laughs> Big uh, pool of blood on the floor and all over the bed. Yeah. Oh, and the, the, the caked makeup over the whiskers. No matter how close you shave, you just can still see it. <laughs> yeah, the whiskers, for God's sake, you can't uh, cover those Transgenders up. Transgenders have been wearing that HD TV makeup since forever. <laughs> 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 that Conan O'Brien just caked on. <laughs> Pink spackle. <laughs> so that happened. And then... um. Some S and M club here in New York. There was a story over the weekend. You read that one? Yes. Yeah. The guy, the guy almost died. He well, he's going to be brain damaged. He's going to have brain damage. What did he do? Went to an S and M club. He's a regular, and uh, they they pretty much hung him up. <clears throat> yeah, his feet were kind of touching the ground. I I guess he had like he was handcuffed. He had high heels on. Uh, what else? Um, I don't know how he was suspended. Some kind of hood or something, and he was suspended. What if his high heels broke or something like that? Oh, really? And he, his feet... And then, then he, she came yeah. to check it on her 20 minutes. Right, and he, he was blue in the face. Hanging by the neck. Don't I don't know. know. Was he hanging by the neck? I do not know. Do we have that story? Yeah, that was a biggie over the weekend. And and I, I learned something, that S&M clubs are pretty much legal? Yeah, Jimmy, course, you know yes. anything about that? Why? Because it's not, it's not sexual? It's not sexual. Sure you can. They're totally so, legal. So this guy would go in there, and uh, he would hang for hours in these uh, dungeons and stuff. And yeah, that was I guess his thing. he liked... He liked to be hung. <clears throat> that is yeah. like the, the exact opposite of like claustrophobia. Yeah. Like how you could actually hang. I would be freaking the fuck out. Oh, be yeah. like, There's no way. Put a goddamn hood over my head. Yeah. Then handcuff me to a radiator. You have any fucking mind? <laughs> These guys love mummification. These, there's guys that love to be <clears throat> smothered. Well, they'll put them on the table and they'll like saran wrap their entire body with their hands down, including their face. Oh, my God. Put little breathing holes. Yeah, like mistress, a straw or something. The mistress will smother you with her ass and then pull off and let you breathe. But you really could die. Wow, that's fucked. Breath play, they call it. You ever see the, the thing where they put you in it? It's like a, it's like a plastic sandwich. And then they, they suck the air out and you're encased in plastic. Ugh. And then there's something that goes in your mouth to breathe. <laughs> but... <laughs> But you're it completely encased in plastic. Can you imagine if somebody was into that, like, what do you call it, breath play, was actually involved in an earthquake and the whole house collapses and they're trying to rescue him. He's in there, no, it's okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm loving all it. all right. This is the ultimate <laughs> fantasy. Leave me alone. Yeah. I'm all right. Yes, he's covered, he's covered with bricks, but he has an erection. We don't get it. <laughs> okay, here you go. Uh, unidentified uh, patron of a Midtown S&M club. Uh, he was bounded and suspended from a ceiling while wearing women's high heels. And a neck choker. He was hospitalized oh. in critical condition for like the gimp, probably. While an accident is the most likely cause, police say they're investigating whether he was the victim of a crime. Uh, Why is he, by the way, unnamed? Because he would go to the club without ID or anything. They're trying to figure oh, out who he, he is. is. He was a oh. regular. They knew him, but they didn't know his real name or anything. He just kind of showed up with, uh, I, I forgot what they said, like just the money in his pocket. God, to pay I hope for it's a comic that I know. <laughs> Keith Robinson was one. The man was found at 130 inside the East 33rd Street Club known as Nutcracker Suite. <laughs> the Nutcracker Suite. An artistic innovation. Uh, wearing his pants but not carrying any identification, police said. He's listening to critical, critical condition. Uh, he was discovered in apparent respiratory distress after a club worker checked on him as he was suspended from the ceiling and noticed that his hands looked blue. And they didn't arrest her, the mistress that was in charge of this whole scene. She's, uh, why wouldn't they arrest her, Jimmy? They might get her for some kind of gross negligence. But it's not a crime. He volunteered for it. He wanted it. Um, but it'd be manslaughter, I think, if he dies. Or some, again, some kind of gross negligence. Yeah. I, I don't know why, but it's not illegal. It's, it's sexual activity. You're probably jerking off in many cases, but you're not fucking. Right. Unfortunately, they don't fuck you. So how, so you're hanging from a collar, basically, or like, but you're, like, but your toes are touching the floor. How is that sexual? I, I don't get it. <laughs> yeah, how does that help you out? It certainly is, but I don't understand it. I don't know. Like, when you wrap yourself in plastic and you got breathing holes, how is that sexual? Like, I don't, I don't understand that. If it's the if connection it's, to being a sexual thing. I do it. I, you got me. I mean, I just don't understand it. Yeah, I mean, some people. I was always jerking off. 
Huh? I was always jerking off while stuff was... If there was a face sitting me or pissing in my mouth, I was always jacking <laughs> off. <laughs> I was. Sad to say that actually really... I don't know. As creepy as some of that shit that you're into, it, I guess it makes sense on some level. But as far as like that, just being tied up, having somebody stick like a dish rag in your mouth, <laughs> I get it, that man. turns you on in a sexual way, right? I don't comprehend. I don't, I don't, we're gonna have to get someone. Someone. To explain I wonder that. if it has something to do with uh, being a baby. Because I was watching something interesting on Lost, where. Um, they were, you know, John Locke, who knows everything, was just covering the baby, <laughs> but he tightened the blanket around the baby. He said, only when they get older do they like to not be restricted, but when they're very young, they like to be restricted. Like, it makes them mm -hmm. feel comforted, like in the womb or whatever. So I wonder if it goes back to that. It has something to do with that, I'm imagining. Like, you feel somehow weirdly comforted. Like how now you're getting your info from Lost. That's nice. Well, I mean, I also know that it's a big fetish. It has to represent something. Yeah. I don't know what... That could be something like. I mean, why uh, do I why do I drank piss? Was I thirsty? Drank piss? No. <laughs> yeah, what's that? Why did I drank piss? <laughs> yes, I don't know. <laughs> drink. Why did I drink? Yeah, well. I drank it. Past tense of, yes. of the uh, verb to drink. <laughs> why did I gargle because with piss you, like it was lavorous? <laughs> because of that, wasn't there some girl like when you were younger? You you told me a story about some girl and she, she smelled pissy. Oh, yeah, yeah, a guy and his sister, actually, with the boy and the girl. I was, I was very young, I was like second grade. I'd get them both to sit on my face separately in their jeans. You know, just smell their crotches because they just pissed their pants. <laughs> in second grade? Yeah, maybe I first. I fucking love that. It's true. What a sick little story. I was going to say, when, when were you ever just not this little pervert running around? Did you first just, like, grade? Walk around? <laughs> Seven or eight. Came to started. school in a bathrobe when they still thought it was cute. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a big heart on under it. Oh, look, he's like Rodney. He's walking like around Dangerfields. Little Let's... kid with a Cialis heart on it in his yeah. robe. <laughs> Let's go to Vegas. It's Ron. Ron! Hey, guys. Hey, Jimmy. You're, you're all over here, man. you got to have a sex talk show, I think. Um, I want to know what's sexy about the logs dropping on your chest. Oh, I wouldn't know. I imagine uh, you wonder that yourself while you're jerking off, and after you come and you're wiping them off, you go, what was sexy about that? <laughs> uh, 300, <laughs> madam. <laughs> All right, and uh, Richard, Wisconsin. Can I say, I think yeah. the cer certain sexuality with a woman that seems disgusting, let's just say, golden shower, whatever, brown showers, um, any of that stuff that people are into, I think it's part of it is the privacy of it all. You're, you're seeing something so taboo, and it is such an intense, it's oddly intimate and intense, as gross mm -hmm. as it sounds. Um, but there was one mistress I used to do golden shower with, and this motherfucker was sexy. She yeah. was, dude, she, she was, she's one, she just got it. She would put her, a pussy right over my mouth, and she would, uh, it would be <laughs> right over my mouth. Dude, she was immaculately clean, and, uh, she would just go open, and I would open, and she would, uh, fill my mouth and she would go swallow. She was so fucking sexy. Uh, oh my god. That is uh, fucking nasty. Oh god. It's you're nasty if you're not Wow, into there that. you go. What would you rather have? Would you rather you have the choice? You either gonna have uh, that horror? I love how Jim tries to like. But there's a lot of people yeah, out there he, right now who I understand. I know what you mean. It. He tries to convince us how sexy uh, it is. Yeah. And we all look around the room like. Uh, so sexy. And then she swallow. Still, so be sexy. still. And then she just take a dump right on my chest. It was. so uh, it was so great. So sexy. No, be still is hack. She knows better than that. Uh, she would say open. It was so fucking sexy because I've said that to girls. I like saying that to girls. And then she took Stop a meat thermometer me and shoved it in my asshole and just went deeper, deeper. No, no, and I went good. Good. It was just this sexy because I'm filling up right now as he's talking about it. And twist it around face. three times, just three times. <laughs> yes, and then unsnap it, and it was just had that little slow, funny scrotum unwind. <laughs> no, um, slow, funny, huh? I'm really dominant sexually. Like I'm not a sub at all. Well, and, that's uh, pretty sub when she's telling you what the fuck to do with her piss in your mouth. Dominate, yeah, but I wanted to do it. She was dominating mm. in a way, but it was her, it was from the neck up, man. That's what it's all about. She was fucking her vibe. Do you understand? That was the no, of I her. don't. Wow. No. We're, we're trying to understand. There is no extension. way I can understand a girl pissing in my mouth. Well, that's a Do you ever want to have somebody wrap can't. you up in cellophane just so you can hear that, that urinating sound as it hits the... <laughs> no, I can't comprehend that. <laughs> the Any aluminum more? foil. <laughs> Why have something in the way? Right, Jimmy? Right, exactly. Cellophane. What am I, wasteful? <laughs> what am I? What is this, waste not, what not? What do you think, he's a rookie? Yeah, I'll fuck on. it. I'll put my mouth anywhere on a girl. Anywhere. But... As far as piss goes, uh, that's not uh, piss is fucking you clean. Know, go man. to the bathroom, take your piss, come out, 
It's clean. And I'll I'll go right I'll go right in there. But I don't comprehend. But don't piss while you're doing. It. I don't comprehend <laughs> anima stuff. I don't comprehend blood. Uh, like fucking, uh, they call them ruby <laughs> showers. I don't comprehend <laughs> fucking. Wait, wait, what wait, do wait. you find an ulcerated fucking <laughs> prostitute? No, she pimps started out. off on Wall Street. She couldn't handle it, <laughs> so now she's blowing people. There are ruby guys. Wait, wait, shower. Jimmy, you can't just casually say ruby shower. I don't. Get, that's what a is tampon. It? She sucked the tampon, or she right. puts her blood. Wow. In I don't get it. I, I can't. To me, that's but that's a ruby shower. Yeah, repugnant. I've never involved in that. Or Roman showers are very popular. Where a girl pukes in your mouth. Um, that's I couldn't ever do that. Wow. Under any circumstance. A uh, ruby shower. <laughs> he knows all the lingo no, and, and blurts it though. out like, no, nah, it's a ruby shower. Like everyone knows. Ruby, ruby, ruby. Hey, man, as long as you're not fucking animals or kids, whatever, do what you want. Kid animals. All right. <laughs> I wouldn't mind. You know, I'm, I, I almost got hit with a strap on one time. I, I was tempted, but... Uh, really? Yeah, she was one of the fucking sexiest people ever. She was a dirty, dirty motherfucker, man. She would oh, do wow. all fetish stuff. She she would just, like put a pussy in my mouth and go, now swallow your wife's piss. <laughs> she'd piss in my mouth. And then, and, uh, then she'd fuck me. She was like a, a, a weird type of dom where she did full service. It's very, very rare mm. for them. <laughs> okay. Swallow your wife's uh. piss. She fucking ruled. <laughs> At a girl. At a girl. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well. Okay, Jimmy oh, Norton. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, going to be at the Borgata. <laughs> no, I'll be in San Francisco this weekend. That's all normal in Sanny Franny. There you go. Sanny Franny. Sanny Franny. Sanny Franny. Let's, get a, Sanny Franny. let's go to Connecticut. Let's see what uh, Michael has today. Michael, what's up? Hi, guys. Hey. Hi. Hey, Jimmy. Um, I was just thinking back to when you were all freaked out about Earl's chewed up pen. But then you'll drink fucking hot hooker piss. I really don't. First of all, Get the fucking connection. It's, it's obvious right now. Here's another pen with tooth marks in it. Oh um, boy, that's good. I fucking specifically said I don't want a pen with tooth marks. <laughs> here it in it. goes. And uh, here's what we do with the pen with tooth marks in it. You see that, Bill? Oh, no, no, I don't see it actually. <laughs> that's where it goes. No. And now we put it. Bill has back turned around. He doesn't want to see in that. In the pen actually. pile. So can that go back in the pen pile, please? If Earl wants to chew pens. Let him chew that one. <laughs> oh, my God. It's so gross. He it's not sticks gr the pen up his ass. Yeah, but just... This, that's the good side of the See? Uh, put that back. He wants to chew pens. Let him chew that one. If you could bring me an unchewed one, please. And yes, sir, uh, I, I don't... Uh, chewing pens is... Uh, if it's your own pen, it's fine, but it's being shared. It's disgusting. And yes, I realize it's a bit inconsistent with my thinking. All right. There you go. There's your answer. Chris in D.C., what's up? Hey, uh, yeah, Air Force Survival School. We teach the pilots whenever they're... Uh, they're out in the bad conditions if they're injured, and there's there's no other way to do it. Uh, urine is very sterile. It is, and of if it they is. have wounds that they need dressed, they should urinate in those wounds in order to clean them. Absolutely, dude. It doesn't say rub hot pussy juice on it. <laughs> Just fucking take a piss <laughs> yeah, in it. Not, if that's available, of course. Hey, real quick throwback to the John McCain thing. Do you guys know that he was uh, initially offered... Um, at five months into his incarceration as a POW, he was offered to be released because of his father's status as an admiral in the military, yeah. and he declined it. Really? And stayed for the entire six years because there were other guys there that had been there longer than he was. And that's <clears> the story. Wait, why, why would the Vietnamese have released him because his father was an admiral? Exactly. That is exactly why. Out of respect for his military family and because of how high-ranking his father was in the U.S. military, they were they had offered him a release, but he declined it uh, because there were other POWs that had been there longer than he was. Well, do you and think so that the U.S. military? I'm sorry. Do you think the U.S. military tried to cut a secret deal because of his father's power? Uh, may like be. something that we don't negotiate, but they were negotiating. And then maybe he said, no, I can't do it like that? Yeah, maybe. I wonder. That sounds... No, but he turned it down. That's the point. Okay. And it's in his book. It's all It's all documented. But more importantly, did he ever drink <laughs> piss? I'd love to talk with Johnny M. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny M. Let's get to Steve on Long Island. Steve. Jimmy. Yes, sir. Jim. Yes. Jimbo. I'm right here. What is it taste like? Popcorn. <laughs> popcorn. You stink. Popcorn. popcorn. Tastes like popcorn. How True, does it tastes like popcorn. It really does, man. It can be very salty. If it's really salty, I don't like it. I like it when it's more clear with a tinge of salt. Oh, God. It's just I'll... making me cringe thinking about it. Filthy I... urine is not clean. It is. It's hygienic. No, no, I'm telling you, Bill. No. Trust me. I'll try, I'll try drinking waste. my own. Just because now waste. I need to know. You ever look, yeah, here's what you do. You want to break yourself into it? You're the girl you tell, look, just, I, just don't wipe it off when you're done. Picking. What if she has, like, chlamydia or something like that? <laughs> you know? Well, that's different. You're going to get that. What does that taste like, Jim? Guacamole? <laughs> <laughs> I think 
committee is a bad example. <laughs> ah, Jim is disgusting. Stop trying to make it mainstream. If, it's if, horrific. If, if fucking, uh, you know, it's very, uh, it's very topical. You can, uh, you know, if you get a scratch on your knee, I mean, you know, why have a band aid when you just whip your dick out? <laughs> and just let it. it run right down your leg. What if she discharges marshmallows? What does it taste like? Oh. I don't know, cocoa. <laughs> oh. I, this is any type of venereal disease is a problem. That's a problem if you're just eating a pussy. I'll bet you if you're eating a pussy and she has chlamydia, it'll have more of a disgusting taste than if she pisses. Absolutely, which is why you don't go to prostitutes. Well, I'm mm -hmm. regular girls, man. I've had oh. regular girls whiz in my mouth. And a, a, a dominatrix is not a prostitute. They're actually, it's a lot of them. But you said that girl actually fucked, too. Oh, two different girls. One so, did, yeah. I'm talking about the one who fucked, too, Jimmy. Okay, yeah, she I'm was I'm saying great. her urine was not clean. I'm saying it was, it was horrific. Unclean urine. She yes. spit in my mouth and everything, so if her piss wasn't it was clean, the rest probably of probably tastes like a mess. Dr. Pepper. <laughs> 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 but dude, she was clean. I never caught a V. I've never had a venereal disease in my life. I just got tested again. Never have I had anything. Um, you know what, Jim? Jim is like the reverse of you know those high school films where the person, the girl, has sex for the first time and it's unprotected, and yeah, she gets yeah. she gets you know AIDS or HIV. He's like the exact opposite. I can have hookers piss in my mouth. <laughs> piss he doesn't clean. get he, anything. He's invincible. He's <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm just, I've actually been more careful than people think. Yeah, huh? Yeah, man. <laughs> Hooker's pissing on you. In my mouth. Slices the bottom your of his feet and just runs through a third world vid village. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't get anything. He's, fuck, he's fucking a hole in the ground in Calcutta. What's wrong with this kid? <laughs> African gentleman jerk off on open wounds. <laughs> uh, Gino from Philly. Clean, actually, sperm is uh, African yeah. sperm is very, very yes, clean. yes, very hygienic. Gino from uh, Philly writes. I heard herpes tastes like <laughs> tater tots. <laughs> <laughs> And Bill K. from Philly. Hey, Ope. Uh, no, the reason they would have offered to release McCain was for propaganda. Oops. Uh, propaganda reasons. The the gooks, he writes this, wanted to use it as an example to other U.S. soldiers that they should not fight for country where one soldier gets preferential uh, treatment. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, yeah, the whole time he was there, they were trying to coerce him to... Uh go on camera or something or sign something that said he was like an air pirate or something like that. Arr. Uh, yeah, <laughs> something like that from... All right, and let's say hi to Josh. Yeah, but those balls cost him five years of his life. He may go on TV and make this statement. Then when you're back in America, just go, ah, that was bullshit. Everybody knows it's bullshit. Nobody believes a hostage is being genuine. <laughs> oh, I guess the Americans are imperialist pigs. He said it with the gun at him. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That's what with I'm all saying. his broken yeah. arms and yeah. legs and yeah. ribs. As he's blinking, help me. <laughs> in Morse code. Yeah, very believable. You, yeah, I know. You really wouldn't have to coerce any sort of confession. You, you get me to say anything. Just don't break my arms again. Sure. Josh in uh, Minnesota. Josh. Hey, Jimmy. What's up, buddy? Hey. Hey, we're going to come see you up in uh, Minneapolis next month. We're all going to piss in a script bottle so if you get sweaty on stage, you can drink some piss to cool yourself down. Atta boy, pocket. some pissicles. <laughs> <laughs> that show's almost sold out, sweetie, so get your tickets. Awesome. Right. Oh, we did. We got front row tickets. Well, oh, good. Enjoy the show. A uh, couple other things here. We got a bride that died during the first dance. Wow. Is that bad, or did that just save him a lot of trouble? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Happened in Florida. Kim, How old was she? Kim, uh, last name, looks like Greek name. Mm -hmm. uh, Kim, blah, 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 wanted a real-life version of the film My Big Fat Greek Wedding, which played in the background as friends fixed her hair and makeup before her own marriage ceremony. Wow. Started off oh. good. But less than an hour after she and Teddy... My big fat Greek heart attack. <laughs> yeah. <That's right. laughs> oh, Teddy F. Carb. We're wed. Uh, Kim crumbled in her husband's arms during a Greek song that means love me. Oh, boy. Jesus. At 36, Kim was dead from? From? From. From? Cardiac arrest. Heart disease. Oh, okay. I, uh, <laughs> what was that? Wow. Yes. I, I, too bad Jackie Mason wasn't there. If he was there, it would have been wonderful. We don't know. Is it a funeral? Is it a wedding? We don't know. She's grabbing. She's dancing. She's it? falling, grabbing her chest. This should have been a one-night stand. I only did this Fuck. because her parents Fuck. pressured me into this. Right. You wonder if they stood to the chicken dance afterwards? Like, <laughs> is there a fucking toe tagging her in the middle of the fucking... <laughs> Come on, people. We paid, we paid for a DJ. Let's, uh, let's try to make the best of this. Yeah, let's uh, make the best of it. <laughs> uh, Anybody got any requests? We got an extra entree. Anybody else want second? Yeah. <laughs> Don't let that distract you. We're going to have the bride's friend rub cake in his face. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> well, you want to know how he consoles himself? 
he consoles himself by reading a list of 101 reasons why I love you that Kim gave him their oh, first Christmas together. I probably shouldn't read that. Number one, you make me smile. Number 98 is especially difficult. It reads, you're the one I want to grow old with. Oh. Oh. Uh, number oh. 99 was really depressing. You're a great dancer. <laughs> 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 number number one hundred suck. You make my heart feel strong. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> number one on one really was awful. You always know what to do when I'm feeling lightheaded. <laughs> Instead of calling the ambulance, you hand me a fucking Snickers bar. That's helpful. <laughs> Thanks, really. <laughs> <laughs> yes. At least I won't be hungry as oh. I hit the floor. <laughs> All those reasons. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> You know how to combine events. That was reading number fifty-one. <laughs> so he did the whole wedding slash wake. You're a real, you're a real fucking multitasker. That's what I heard about you. Uh, let's say hi to Michael in Houston. Michael. Hey man, I heard that during the first dance, he said, "Honey, have you ever uh, heard of an F 5 <laughs> Ooh, linger longer. Very good, sir. Let's go to John in North Carolina. A lot of North Carolina calls. Oh, really today. amazing. What's up, John? Hey guys. Hey, it'd be real easy. They can just take all the uh, flowers from the wedding and drag them over to the funeral. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> just, gonna, oh, God. just go to Yahoo Maps. Fucking <laughs> yeah. We got where to take it. <laughs> can, yeah. Change all the cards from con congratulations to condolences. Yeah, just yeah. a fucking pen while you scratch yeah. it out. <laughs> <laughs> White out on the card. It's a wedding cake, but with tears near it. Simon from Virginia, number 67. You always remind me to take my heart medication. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> They're singing that funny song. Oh, the bride grabs her chest. <laughs> the bride grabs her chest. Uh, number 105. Uh, that's not right. Oh, no. Oh, boy. Here we go. Let's say hi to Devon in Virginia Beach. Devon. Kevin in Virginia Beach. But, uh... The husband told her she looked drop dead gorgeous today. Funny. <laughs> oh, funny. Let's go to Rich in Wisconsin. Hey, Anthony. Yo. It could have been uh, your your all time favorite dream, Mr. and Mrs. Anthony Cumia. <laughs> 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 and you know what was really sad is that everybody was going over to the table and very discreetly taking back their envelopes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, won't be needing this. Jeremy in Cleveland, what's up? Hey, b, -b boy. Hey. I wanted to know was her song totally eclipsed with a heart? <laughs> <laughs> she was eclipsed by bacon fat. <laughs> uh, we go to Sean in North Carolina. Sean. Uh, something old, something new, something borrowed. I guess you were something blue. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> uh, John, Michigan. Hey, oh, you forgot to ask if uh, dude from Wisconsin was a heated. Right. You're an I'm just Number a little 42. tired. Number 42. Did she love deep fried fatty foods? Yeah. God, I suck. Yeah, that's all right. You had you it. You promised to love away. It's understandable. and honor until death do you part. Oh. All right, that was quick. <laughs> yes. You could have time to think about it if you want. Reception. Of course. No need to rush. <laughs> Number 13, you make my heart skip a beat. <laughs> Justin B. from PA. Oof. All right, well, how, many, uh, how many jokes can we make about this? My a God. lot more. You think? I think so. You take my breath away? Uh, hmm. Well, now people are coming up with the wedding songs. Bob in Cincinnati, I heard their wedding song was Take My Breath Away. She's got Betty Davis eyes, but William Frawley Hart. <laughs> 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 William Frawley. <laughs> Uh, uh, let's say hi to Joe in Ohio. Joe? Hey, happy birthday, Jimmy. Thank you for remembering. It's been a while. Hey, uh, when they were consummating the marriage, he, she, he says, what are you going to do, just lay there? Oh, now I suck, huh? <laughs> oh, good Lord. That was her. Oh, come on, it wasn't that bad. Jeez. Let's say hi to Martin in Missouri. Martin? Hey, I want to know if they call GPS. <laughs> uh, let's say hi to Johnny in Cleveland. Johnny! Hey, what's going on there, guys? Hey. Yeah, the ironic thing was that uh, he was the one who was afraid to take the plunge. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah. Is, what? Is this show mm. being done on a highway outside of Rochester? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Seth. I didn't get it. There was a 30 some odd car pile up outside Rochester. Ah, Jesus. Right. 
I know. She I was went, suffering from cold there. feet and everything else. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's say hi to Chuck in Philly, Chuck. <laughs> wow, you look great. Uh, Who did you make up? Ride. The coroner. <laughs> Sam. That's all. Oh, God. <laughs> Sorry, Chuck. It was a good line. That's but right. They, they barreled Sorry. right over you. Sorry, what did you say, oh. Chuck? That's all right. He, I knew him. It, it was it just basically like God needed a bride. Oh. Just, just they found cute. wedding cake all over her lips, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> She was dancing, and she fell down. <laughs> well, gee, Clance, shut up, Sam, your genitals are tiny. <laughs> Get my members-only jacket. I'm going to drive by an explosion and investigate. <laughs> Why would a coroner do that, Quincy, Jimsy? Uh, isn't he uh, supposed to stay back at the lab and, and do the autopsies? Why are you That's always in the That's easy for act? you to say, Ooh. but I think she was murdered. Oh, okay. Murder. <laughs> they found Fudgy the Whale in her vagina, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it was murder because the cake only came with the groom standing up and the bride was lying face down on the top of the cake, Sam. <laughs> Hey, Lieutenant Monahan here. Get away from me. Your action is inconsistent with everyone else in this show. <laughs> uh, Jim C. <laughs> Let's go to Sean in North Carolina. Sean. You had me at... <laughs> <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> uh, let's say hi to Fitz. What happened, Jimmy? I got shocked again. Oh, Jimmy, you all right? No. Jimmy. <laughs> uh, let's go to Fistful of Yen. Fistful of Yen. Hey, love you. Love the show. Yeah. Um, they're doing a movie based on this called No Weddings and One Funeral. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lance in North Dakota. Lance. Hey, boys. How's it going? Hey. I'm about to kickstart my heart. For what? What, Jimmy, what's going on? Over there? Hey, because, hold on, hold on. Jimmy's like on the floor. His chair's my fucking fell over because these headphones have a cord, which is <laughs> where I can actually stand here and then go broadcast at Lincoln Center with. <laughs> that would be it, a long distance for the people always, that aren't close you're by. Fucking caught on the wheels, <laughs> I know, man. and I'm always getting tangled up. There are some days I I fall on the floor because like the 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 cord is tangled up in my feet around my dick. Look, look at what he's trying to do to free you. How did I get so tangled up? What was I doing? <laughs> I, I was just talking. <laughs> was I pretzeling and no one was telling me? He's pretzeling again. Keep it under your hat. <laughs> Pretzel. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, we got a mistress on the line. Okay. Mistress Roxanne. Do we, do we know her? Do Where are you from? Where are you from? Hold on. Here we are. All right. Uh, mistress uh, Roxanne, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you? Good. Good. Welcome to the Opie and Anthony show. Where do you work? Well, I'm an independent mistress, and I rent space in Midtown Manhattan. Okay. Uh, do you do out calls or in calls or both? I do both. Okay. Yellow treats at AOL dot com. Pardon email? me. I'm saying you could email me. <laughs> <laughs> you might have a customer. What's your name, Mistress mm. Roxanne? Oh, <laughs> yes. Roxanne, yes. you heard the story about the uh, the guy brain damage turned blue over the weekend here in New York at the yes. Nutcracker Suite. Uh, yeah. All we're trying to figure out is like some of these fetishes are really bizarre, and we're trying to figure out how they're sexual in nature. Well, um, for example, a guy hanging from a like a dog collar for hours on end, and that's all. How how is that sexual? I, we don't. I don't get it. Well, to many people, it's not sex. It's sexual in nature. It's it's therapy in some sort of way. Um, you could go through from childhood experiences. Many of the clients that I see come and talk to me about their personal problems and, or things that are going on in their life. And then, you know, they have certain things they like. Some people like feet. Mm -hmm. Some people like to be spanked brutally hard. Um, one guy told me once that to be beaten really hard was because he never got spanked as a child. And he wanted to see what it was like. He used to hear his friend get hit um, every once in a while. 
It's because he lived next door, and I guess the window would be open. So what do you, I mean, oh, Mister? I'm sorry to interrupt you. What do you think it was that made him? Was it the the connection he felt that other boy had to his mommy? Possibly, yeah, it could be that. And um, it, it it's all the thought of missing out on something. And some people um, are big time. You know, I, I've I've dominated everyone from famous people to politicians. I've never would say who they are because right. expression is always a must. But um, some people like to dress up like a lady, like this man in high heels. I mean, they don't dare tell people they're a cross-dresser. Are you, many of the people are married. Hey, are, are you a MILF? Yes, I am. Is that you? It says uh, Baltimore, uh, D.C., and Philly? Pardon me? Is that your ad where you call it Mistress, but you spell it M-I-Z? Yes, oh, M-I-Z. Okay. <laughs> yeah. What kind of fetish do you specialize in? What, what's your favorite? And what don't well, you do? I, I do a lot of role play um, and blogging. And, I, and I'm pretty good at bondage and hog ties. Do you do showers? Um, no, I do not. I, you know, there's a lot of things some people do, but that's one of the things I do not do. So you, you think um, that's disgusting, right? Ruby showers you think are gross? Well, um, I would never do it. <laughs> Although, you know... A lot of people have done this with their boyfriends. Or <laughs> what do you think of a guy that might like a log in his mouth every once in a while? Uh, I, that's not my thing. It's awful, but, right? But, you know, there's something for everyone. You know. Can we role play a little bit? Can we try some role play? I've never role played. <laughs> All right. I, I'm also a phone sex operator too. <laughs> okay. How about um, now? I, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say. Um, um, could you get the audio, and I want you to say, I'm too busy. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. What kind of, uh, what kind of role play do you, can we do? Well, we got Adam here. He's never kissed a girl. You know oh, what? Oh, the little... Get Adam in here. Yeah, that's a good call. Well, I'm going to do something thing. nice for this kid. <laughs> Hold on, sweetheart. We're going we're gonna to get somebody for you. Okay. Yeah, we should get her to do something with Big A. <laughs> What's a sexy word that you refer to the penis as? Well, uh, Adam. Well, I call it. Uh, I I don't know if I can say it on the air. Yes, you can. It's a satellite radio. Yes, you can say whatever uh, you want. Oh, I call it a little pussy if it's really small. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes! I mean, you know, I mean that that that's about it. You know, because it's all different. You know, <clears throat> things. But um. I don't know. I don't really call it anything. I just, I just basically tick them or you know, say terrible things. You know, basically it's stomp your high heel into his <laughs> little it, it's pussy. It's a person, <laughs> right. little Willie. I, I call it little Willie usually or something. All right, we so, have uh, we have an intern in here. His name's Adam. He's never kissed a girl. Um, you're 22. I forgot. 22. He's 22 years old. Uh, and he's never kissed a girl. He's a weirdo. You want to do so, some phone hey. sex with uh, hey, Mistress <laughs> Mistress Roxanne? I would. I would love to. You want to sit down so we don't see your raging heart on? Uh, okay. Uh, she oh. won't have a raging heart on unless at the end of it, like at that wedding, he would have. <laughs> <laughs> well, we think uh, we we don't know what's what wrong with Adam. Something's up with Adam. If you could get him to sport some wood, then I would. I I would guess that you're pretty damn good at the uh, at the uh, the phone sex. It looks like he's going to oh. testify. Yeah. All right, how do we get this going? Adam's on the phone with you. Well, um, he's got to tell me what he's into first. <laughs> right. Or what he thinks he's into when he's alone by himself. Okay. okay. Adam? Uh, what I'm into is uh, is pornography. <laughs> um, we go. I, li I, like to, uh, I like to touch myself. Um, us usually around 5 o'clock. Why you pencil in it morning? in at a certain time? Hold on, he's in telling her nothing. He's telling no, her nothing. No, I, I'm in. I'm into. Uh, she's asking what you like sexually. Yeah, uh, what I like sexually. Um, I like. Uh, I like ass. Um, mm -hmm. I like. Uh, I like. A, I like a nice body uh, that that is properly taken care of. Um, mm -hmm. and, yeah, but when, when you when you look at the porn, what pictures? What kind of porn are you looking at? Um, I look at uh, MILF Hunter porn. <laughs> MILF Hunter. <laughs> and, uh, um, and, and just uh, a variety of porn. Um, Asian. Okay, yeah, um, all right. Blonde, brown, 
It doesn't matter. I feel like it, yeah, it's just porn. Yeah. Now, um, now, have you ever thought of a role play? I I've never thought of a, I I kind of like the the whole teacher role play thing, you know, okay. like uh, like I like I got a bad grade. I got to go clean the erasers. All right. So what's your name again? <laughs> it's role playing. His name goes. Broad gets. Adam. His, his name's Adam. Yeah. Adam. Uh, Adam. Yeah, you know you have to stay after school this evening, don't? After school, don't you? I I do. Yes. You know, <laughs> I saw you picking up Susie's skirt the other day, and I don't really like it. You even pinched her ass. Yeah, Susie was a uh, <laughs> was a real bitch. Hey, you watch your mouth, young man. You know what? What? You know, this, this is the state of Texas, so they, there's corporal punishment here. Ooh. And your parents signed a waiver. So you know what? Yes. I think I'm going to put you over my knee, maybe. Have you ever been spanked? Uh, when I was a small child. Yeah. Well, but before that. No. I'm going to make you... You know, how old are you now? Are you... How old are you now? You're like, um, 19. <laughs> 22. You're 22. You're going to college. When's the last time you got laid? The last I've never been laid. You haven't? You're still a virgin? Yes. Mm. Well, maybe that... Now I understand you a little bit more. Haven't you ever thought about what it would be like? You know, what are you looking down my skirt for? You I, keep I, looking at my cleavage. I apologize. <laughs> you know what? You, you should have never seen that before. Maybe I should zip my shirt a little bit for you just to see what it looks like. Just to, you know? Ooh. Now I'm going to put your hands on my zipper and I want you to unzip it. <laughs> my jacket. You see that bra? It's got all the lace on it. Isn't that pretty? Very. Now, what I want you to do is just touch the outside of the lace right now. Can't you feel the warmth of my breast on your hand? Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. It's and then I keep going. As a... As a Boring. <laughs> She just tapped no. out. No, I, she wasn't yeah. bad, though. I, I don't know. I do it faster. I, I do it faster. But I was, like, nervous, too. I've never done this on the air before. Oh, my God. You know what I never noticed? He, he sounds like Adam Sandler. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my oh, a- God. Adam. Yeah, yeah. No, but, I mean, it's it's difficult to uh, to do this, like, on the spot. Can I try it with you? Can I, I mean, he was a little too shy. I, I kind of like one. Uh, yeah, Jimmy's good at this stuff. Do you do incest Adam, role thank play? You. Thanks, You're welcome. Do, do I do what? Incest role play. Well, I, I don't discuss that. I don't discuss that. What, well, I'm saying I wanted to try some. I, I, I don't. I, um, it's actually illegal. No, it's not. Oh, oh, uh, no, oh, incest, you said, incest, real pain. I've never done that. you think you said incense? Yeah, what do you think uh, I said? No, 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 I thought you meant, like, to say that you are, no, 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 to say you are underage. You're not allowed to say yes, you're Yes, you are. You're allowed, first of all, I'm saying incest, but you're allowed to do age play. Of course you're allowed to. You're allowed to show pe- children murdered in movies. They don't charge you with killing a kid. You're actually allowed no, no, to. No, 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 um, no, that actually there's certain legal things. Um, I mean, I, not that I don't do it. <laughs> I do, but I wouldn't do it on the air, you know, <laughs> because, uh, I'm, you know, it, there's certain things that... Can you get Roland in here? They both... You're, you're not allowed to. I, I, I just, you're they, not yes, you're that. allowed to portray yeah. something. We all know you're an adult. Everyone knows I, you're an adult. No, I, I, I do know that, but there's certain, um, with the company that I work for, uh, <laughs> I, don't I'm say it's legal. To, just say you know, just say it's company policy. Don't say it's a legal thing. It's not a legal thing. Um, no, no. I mean it's a company policy. A yeah, for the for the you know. Yeah. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah. But, but I do. But that's something I do yeah. all the time. I mean that's you like that's one of the number on one. Wait, I'm a, nothing. I'm a milk. <laughs> You're a milk. Nothing they won't let sexier. you do. Hold on. They won't let you do like a uh, young age play. No. How about if I, I pretend I, I, I'm young? I, 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 no, you no, know, even if you pretend you're young, I mean, 
you know, I, but how, that's but that's what you get a lot. How I mean, about just regular incest then? Like if I have a a whole mommy uh, son thing, can we try that? Because I think that's very sexy. And it's very hard to find anyone who could do the real. I would never want to really do it with my mom, but it's it's cool to find someone who could do it. Yeah, yeah. People who wouldn't do it. Yeah, it, it's their taboo of. Um, <laughs> It's their, it's just being taboo. Well, can oh, we try yeah. some? Pardon me? Can we try some? Oh, I, mean, I can joke around a little bit, yeah. But, Mommy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mommy. I've been really bad. Um, hmm. What can have I, you can done? I have a pen for a second? Huh? What happened? Um, I didn't clean up my room like you told me to, and I was really bad in school today. Well... You know, you, you know what? This keeps happening over and over. You know, I'm going to just ground you and keep, keep you in the closet or something. You know, what do I have to do? Hmm? Um, What's going I, on? Why do you think you keep doing these things? Because I'm three. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only kidding. Oh, I'm only teasing you. you know what? I'm, all, no, no, I'm teasing you. I'm teasing you. Um, I'm not into incest at all. I'm just joking. I kind of set you up for that. But we do have a lot of callers, I think. Yeah, we certainly do, I'm Jimmy. Hope, um, that, that are just oh. going to be... Yeah, but uh, before we get to the callers, so so when you go to like an S&M club and you get these weird things done, it's does it? How does it? How does how does it connect to sex? We don't get that. We kind of asked that earlier, but you didn't really explain it. Well, it, it's some. It's not really necessarily so, so, sex to some so, people. It's so. it's just like. It's just a naughty thing that's been going on in their mind that they want pain or that they ah, like pain. Right. Um, it's all different people, you know. Yeah. It's come on. Has, has it, anyone ever? Uh, Hold on to your hat. Pinched you, pinched <laughs> yep, you, and yep. you know, uh -huh. in the nipples, mm -hmm. and it kind of like was wow. Go to the phone, sir. Right, right. Yeah. You know, some people like that. And that's amazing I mean, how that just turns into something, you know. Right. Yeah, I mean, you know, somebody. Yeah. Pinching, picking you in the ball. What was the? Uh, oh, oh, when guys have that, when guys want to be trampled on, a lot of them end up um, liking it because they were kicked in the balls as a kid. Sure, sure. Or they listen what? to physical and, graffiti. And it, it, it was a remembrance of a girl that they had a crush yeah. on. As a mistress, what was the strangest uh, request you, you you got? Oh, the strangest request to be mummified. Oh. Um, he was wearing so like so a total long. like wet suit. Oh really? Mummified it for three hours, only a tube out of his mouth. Uh huh. Um, and you know, of course, you have to watch constantly. Sure, you know, you have sure, to make sure you're sure. you're in the room at all times. Sure. And um, that's why I was surprised that somebody would. I mean, you know, I, when you're suspending somebody, but um, regardless, uh, yeah, mummified for three hours. So you think they're going like to go to jail? All right. Uh, you want to? Well, you want to take some phone calls or? Yeah, and then that, then the man after that oh. after being mummified yeah. for three hours, I I hung him upside down by his feet and I was beating him and put electrodes on him. Do you have to take a course to make sure you do this properly? Oh yes, yeah. no, you <laughs> have to know what you're doing. You know, you you, you get yeah. trained. It's like a CPR class. They got like half a torso laying <laughs> yeah. on the floor. Right. This, no, this no, is the proper it's, way it's, to hang a no, body have, from their feet. And, and you know what? Now don't you do it the to, other way, or they'll right. die. You ask people. You ask people too. Like, right. do you have any medical problems? Is you know, you, you want to make sure because it's how long can you hold your breath? Fun. Sure. Well, Mistress uh, Roxanne, I I haven't seen interest like this in a in quite some time now yeah the phones are lit they certainly are anthony let's say hi to which one you want to go to uh, uh probably uh, steve i guess all right, let's go to steve from yellowstone steve what's going on hello hi how are you steve hello mistress how are you i'm a little shy i've, I've only dabbled a bit i've never actually uh, uh talked to a mistress but i've been very very curious about it Mm -hmm. I kind of want to be, like, mummified while I scroll, scroll, scroll. Is it possible for, like, a mummification fantasy to be done? Like, um, I, I don't know. I, I, I just want it to be mummified somehow because, basically, that's how productive I am at work. So I figured I might as well at least be... I, hello? <laughs> yes, I'm listening. I, I'm sorry. I'm just I'm a little bit shy. A little nervous. I'm kind of Steve. looking yeah. at myself in the mirror with tattoos. Um, how do you feel about mummification? And is it very dangerous? Because I'm always afraid of my nose getting clogged. Well, yes. <clears throat> I mean, you, you have to be careful. <clears throat> I mean, you wouldn't start out with uh, complete mummification Three. right away. Um, you'd have to Two. start out first with breath play. Mama! 
somebody I have had their hand sex over your mouth or, or at a Greek you know. wedding in Florida. <laughs> Ramon! I'd like to spank this woman with a tractor trailer. <laughs> I only, I only do this. Ramon! <laughs> this woman satisfies my boring fetish. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I, I never oh, dominate those who don't want to be dominated. It's it's all about having fun uh, and being yeah, naughty. I, I'm you know? sorry about that. Every once in a while we get a prank call that comes in. Um, yeah. So you were saying, Mistress uh, Roxanne, we're trying to take this very seriously today because, you know, it was, a, it was a very interesting case that happened over the weekend here in New York no, City. No, it, it is. It's Nutcracker very unfortunate. Street. Yeah. I, I think it, part of it might have been due to not tr proper training. Mm -hmm. you, you know, it's it's like... You know, I don't know. I just don't know what to say. It's it's a sad, unfortunate yeah. thing that happened. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> um as we uh, just um, so what's the uh, uh number? What the number one fetish you really get involved in? Um, well, well like we all care. I do a lot of mommy role play. The mommy <laughs> role play, role play. Yeah. right, right. That's the big yeah. one. And medical yeah. role play. Yeah. Medical. What yeah. did you do before this job? Well, I do acting. Many, many actresses what? are doms. Yeah. You, you what? I'm acting and sing. Uh, I act and I sing. Yeah. Acting? Yeah. Oh. Huh. Do you do any of the urine stuff, though? No, I do not do that. No. Um, Is it the I problem just, you have with the diabetes? No, I just, I'm just not into it. Um, there's certain things some people are what into. What kind into of it. mommy things do you do? Oh, oh, you mean diaper stuff awesome. like that? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I thought you were talk, going back to the other thing, the shower thing. No. Um, oh, you know things. Yeah, I, I do various types of things. It's like you know, you got a bottle. You know, you. you, you Feed them. You know, sometimes. Um, Do you ever like openly laugh at these uh, creeps? Oh, of course. Oh my goodness. But, but when, when you're when you're not supposed to be laughing at them, get, when why don't I you just keep talking? No problem. Lots of times the Hispanic <laughs> Jews come in. Uh, Sometimes people have like a two part question, but that's okay. You do whatever oh, you oh, have I'm to sorry. do. I think you need a spanking, Miss. <laughs> uh. Got to spank the boring right out of you. <laughs> uh, now Valentine's Day right around the corner. Do you get a I lot of couples for Valentine's Day? Well, I, well, I didn't even like finish my question that time. What? Hello. Hello. Yeah, I guess you could talk now. No, no, I, I it cut off. It sounded like I couldn't hear you for a minute. No, I was right there. No, my cell, my cell phone cut out. So I, now, what did you say? Valentine's Day. <laughs> yeah. What about it? Is business good? Yes, usually. Yeah. Because, you know, people are lonely or or some people just want to do something crazy. Right. Like yeah. a heart-shaped box put in their ass? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> do you do couples or what? Of course. I do a lot of couples training. Yeah. Because lots of times the guy's into <laughs> They're it. They're drinking Ruby to... Port on the Today Show, I swear to God. <laughs> Chocolate and wine. They're drinking ruby port. Oh, <laughs> as in a ruby shower. All right, uh, let's uh, say hi to Paul. Uh, Paul. Uh, hello, mistress. Oh, is this Uncle Paul? Oh, yeah. How are hey, you, hey, Uncle Paul? Uh, 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 mistress uh, Roxanne. <laughs> Uncle Paul's a, a faithful listener of this show. He's terrific. <laughs> hello. Okay. Hi. How are you? I I have to take issue with you saying that the the age play isn't proper because I've been involved in many scenarios where the age play was used. Uh, uh, how could you say that's against the law? I think that no, that's... No, uh, no, no, no. Because you... Oh, go ahead. You talk. I was just finishing up. It's all about you. <laughs> no, I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, it's but okay. No. I'm just a caller. What do I know? I no, have ADD right and I didn't you take talk. my medicine yet. <laughs> <laughs> you are too much. <laughs> Humsicle. <laughs> yeah, so how I, could you say that's against the the age play? Only during it's a contract I know. have with the fine the film people that I. <laughs> this fat bitch. She 
should be attacking Roy Scheider in a boat. <laughs> Ramon! The Clintons should be pimping this blimp out to SeaWorld. <laughs> You know your If she won a Grammy, her name would be Herbie Fatback. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like one of the clients that I have. <laughs> uh, Mistress uh, Roxanne, I apologize. That sounded, did it sound just like Uncle Paul, everyone? That you really should call the show? Yeah. That's so weird. Yeah. No, that, that guy sounds just like, uh, I, know, I think I know who he is. <laughs> yeah, how would you know that guy? Because uh, he's a guy that could just phone pranks. Really? He does, really? Oh. What kind of phone yeah. pranks? Oh, just calls up various places and... and yeah. And he calls us a lot, like though. That. All right, you finish up. Now, he calls us a lot, though, and he always disturbs. We, we try to have, like, a serious conversation with somebody. Yeah. And he goes in at different people. It's kind of irritating. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a very good question coming in from Scott in Boston. Scott, what's up? Yes, hey, gentlemen. How are you? Uh, pretty good. Man. You're, you're are talking you to Mistress uh, Roxanne. Go ahead, Scott. Yes, Mr. Shoxan. I was just curious if you were suggesting that we raise super kids. Oh, uh, that's a that good you, question. That you what? Yeah, that, that we are, you were suggesting we raise super kids. Right. That's a very good question, Scott. Uh, Mr. Roxanne, yes. I don't know what you mean of by that. Of course you've heard of the phenomenon uh, super kids by now. Yeah. No, I haven't heard that. Really? You're not hear that. And you call yourself a mistress? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I am a mistress. I've been doing this for 10 years. Mm -hmm. Are, are you up on the latest stuff as far as uh, you know the the S and M fetish world goes? Well, I ha I go to some parties <laughs> once in a while, <laughs> but uh, I don't know what Super Kids is. I haven't heard that. Uh, you don't know what Super Kids is all about, Bill? Why don't you explain to Mistress uh, Roxanne what Super Kids is all about? It's a it's a new phenomenon, sure. Yeah, it's uh, these kids who are actually born uh, with male size uh, uh, adult size genitalia. <laughs> Oh, and wow. uh, they make them run track, and uh, they try to give them the Jordan shorts, but sometimes they don't, so it gets a little weird. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Are you serious? Yes. Mm. You haven't heard of, of Super Kids? No. They have, they have large genitals. No. And there's that only going to get bigger after puberty. And so. there's adult males out there who uh who, who like wish they were a super kid so they kind of go back and make believe they're a kid with giant like uh genitalia oh i no, no i've never got a request for that ever like, you're very specific you don't seem to be like uh like you know like user friendly like oh, across the map right the fact that you know if the i if I, if I could be so bold you're kind of ignorant in some areas <laughs> This, yeah, this, well, the whole thing I, the whole I, thing with I, the super I, kids I, thing is the embarrassment of having giant genitals as a kid. It freaks I, the yeah, mothers I've out. Never ha I've never had anybody uh, talk to me about that. And you've you, been you, doing this for 10 years and you don't know what yeah. super kids is about. That is really <laughs> fucked up, man. What did you do before no, this? No, not. Oh, not really because my, no, because Sorry, my clientele you. that I have are... I think you're. I think you're probably a bit that. lazy when it comes to maybe uh, you know making sure you're up on you know what's going on out there because super right, kids is something us. that's been going on for about a year or so now. No, because I don't have a request for it. It's a phenomenon. Somebody, look, that it's, started nobody's going to judge you if you say you've only been doing it you know for for, for you know six I've been years doing or this weeks. For ten years. I've been doing this for ten years, but if somebody doesn't have a request, Whoa, for it, why are you so defense? Because, here. Super because kids, we all know. Have, it's really odd. No, you know because you must be really into. The, <laughs> um, well, no, we do a radio show. Everything. We do a radio show. I, we talk I've about everything, and we've had many, uh, many discussions on super kids. Well, I'm not, I don't have satellite radio. Well, if you so have, a, if you just no. Google it, I mean, it, you can. You sure, you're just orbiting you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll Google it. I'll check it out, but I've never heard of it. Yeah, you know, Google that. Why request. don't you? Usually, people. Want right. to be laughed at Up. for being too small? You're Up responsible, fish. right? All that right. Uh, so how do oh. we end this? Well, we appreciate the call, and uh, I mean it was kind of helpful to have you on because we, we didn't really have anybody else calling. But mm -hmm. yeah, well, um, where can people get a hold of you? Number. Where can they get a hold of you if they want a fetish session? Okay, it's one eight hundred. Well, I wouldn't give out the number. Yeah, you might you not really sell it. yourself that well. We have today. a lot of <laughs> listeners. What website? It would actually hurt uh, business. I'm thinking. No, no, no. This is my phone session business. My phone. No, okay. Yeah. No. Well, no. hey, she wants to give out a number for phone session business. Why not? Why would she at this point? Yeah, she after this horrible, she's going to get a lot. I'm sure. 
Yeah, from this well, uh, segment. That's good. That's good I say me. you give it out if you want to, madam. Mademoiselle. Yeah. 1-800-275-2757. Five three three six. Eight six. All right. Extension two okay. zero One, four eight four four eight, eight nine five four one. Two. Two. It's very convenient. It's easy to remember. <laughs> right. oh, Muddy, what are you, the star of Lost? <laughs> or it's um, Mr. Roxanne on Night Flirt. Hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Roxanne. Stop Do you it. think though, like, it's your real name? Yeah. What I mean, is your real name? What's your real name? I mean, no Come on. What is it? Molly. You sound like a Deirdre. No, I'm sure you're good at what you do. You're a MILF and you're probably into spying. I mean, I'm sure you're good. You ever slip a finger in there just to show somebody who's really the boss? Yeah. For real. In business. <laughs> like you're spanking them and a finger goes in. You're like, ah, oh, look who made an appearance. And they go, tee hee. Oh, you're being a naughty boy, aren't you? I am. I actually have really? a strap on my pants. Hey, uh, <laughs> you're being a naughty boy, aren't you? Yeah. Um, you're, you could also be um, found at stupidcunt.com. Oh, Is that no. true? <laughs> I don't think so. Let me look. Punch You're not him. being nice, are you? No. That was rude. That was, uh, it needs actually, to be disciplined. That was just an error. Somebody uh, emailed that in. Well, that's all right. Yeah. What, what's the web address that they want to get you, the real one? Pardon me? What's the web address that they want to reach you? What's the real one? I suck at my job dot com. No, they can write me on my email address. It's it's M I it's Mistress Roxanne, M I Z T R E S S Nodding Off dot org. <laughs> You misspelled Rox -E yeah. AOL. You, you misspelled Roxanne, though. R O X Z A N N. I mean, mistress. <laughs> right. And Jesus. mistress is spelled wrong, too. It's M I Z, right? Yeah. yeah. How many mistress Roxannes are out there? Why don't you pick an original name? Yes. Is, is. is it true? You're no, no, your name's not really. Spelling. Your name's not Roxanne. Mistress no. Silly Goose. So, oh, my real name. Yeah, so you could have oh. been Mistress something and been able to actually name, spell the names name correctly. Leslie. No, I, I spell it that way so people can find me if they... Is it true your email is hackmistress email. at yuckhoo.com? Mm. <laughs> oh, I don't like Thank that. Thanknaughtyboys.com. <laughs> ah. Yeah. <laughs> Uncomfortablelaugh.net. <laughs> mm-hmm. <sighs> I don't know when to hang up. Don't work. Well, guys, you take care. We Have a good one. Behave you oh. yourself. Yes, behave. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Or what? What's yeah. going to happen? You're going to spank us? <laughs> uh, <laughs> nothing. Is hello? Oh, oh, hello, oh. hello, uh. hello, 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 hello. This is kind of like her hello, club, but more hello, interesting. Hello, <laughs> hello, it's hello, not quite as annoying. Hello, hello. hello. Well, that was informative. That was the sound in my head when she was doing phone sex. <laughs> oh, my God. It was the worst. Yuck. <laughs> Let's do line of the day. You Get got the that right, here. fella. Uh, SkiColoradoNow.com for info on great deals on 26 world-class resorts and up-to-the-minute snow conditions. You log on to uh, SkiColoradoNow.com. Here's a runner-up line of the day. Go. Uh, do you sit in them? No. Do you ever just I think somebody sit sat here and watched Boog Powell. Yeah. <laughs> 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 the keypad letters on her number was Z Z Z Z dash Z Z Z Z dash Z Z Z Z Z. Very funny. Uh, here's a, another runner-up line of the day. I'll take assiduous for a thousand, Alex. <laughs> What my stroke was. Sinduous. <laughs> no, that would be hilarious for a thousand. <laughs> wow. Sinduous. Uh, Here's the final runner up line of the day. That means I, I get charged with rape again. Oh, I should use the book one. The Queen of England is an assiduous whore. <laughs> <laughs> Very, very good. Oh. SkiColoradoNow.com. Bill Burr on Letterman on Friday. That's right. And I'll be in Sandy Franny Friday, Saturday, and Sunday holiday weekend at Cobb's Comedy Club. And Bill's coming back tomorrow. We got a car that goes, uh, what, 130 miles. Oh, it does 130 miles per gallon. Oh. Did we do this one? The maker is Weren't we dead. supposed to? No. <laughs> That's what we're going to see. Yeah. Who makes it? Some dude. 
<laughs> Dead guy. Some guy. Yeah. Future government guy got victim. Yeah. Poisoned in a uh, diner. Yeah. Mark's cars. You could get <laughs> 600 miles per tank. Jesus. Zero to 60 in five seconds. Be funny the tank was the size of this room, though. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Uh, being funny wouldn't be the operative word. <laughs> funny would be my incorrect adjective. <laughs> it would be uh, just something Jim said. <laughs> As opposed to uh, implying the reaction. Dude, you're non-existent. Your Ramon was hilarious today. Thank you. I didn't it like really was. that kind of language. The Uncle Paul was creepy. <laughs> Bill Burr goes, is that Jim? Yeah, that voice you was can't amazing. Even it. You don't like that? Uh, you don't that, like that. I like to bounce him on my lap, Bill. Kind of relaxes him, you know. <laughs> then go into a state of calmness. Then you just do what you gotta do. Pull that in the underpants. All right. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Lick papaya juice off it. I like papaya juice in a can. It's warm. <laughs> Put it in your mouth. Oh, God. <laughs> what is wrong with you? Uh, have a cumsicle. Now the school shooting, Memphis, Tennessee. Oh, yeah, boy. how bad? 17-year-old shot inside high school in Memphis, Tennessee. Mm. Uh, Unbelievable. I got fired from that school. Mm. I was misunderstanding. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> I was searching him. I thought he had some stolen items in his underpants. <laughs> here's your thank uh, you. Here's your line of the day. Here, here comes line of the day. Line of the day. Nothing worse. Yeah. Just stop. So where are you from, Ringling Brothers? You're hired. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how you executive produce. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Yep. There it is. See you tomorrow. Yeah. We got to, uh, you know, go. And, uh, Amscray. Uh, we gotta we go got that thing. Meet a new person at the end we of got firing that thing. eight months. Why bother at this point meeting new people? Oh. I hear she's good, though. No, nah, she's actually cool. I shouldn't say that. I met her. She's very, very nice. So. Yeah. We got to go say uh, hi. Yeah, so we're going to do that. And, um. Peace. Peace out. Peace in. Yeah. Any time now. I, I already said goodbye. Oh, I don't know what right. they're waiting for. Take it easy.